And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We're here with Eric Clary. He's back in the house, AK Cappy. Got a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it, baby. And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Shit Podcast, man. It's Money Monday. We're here with Aaron Clary, man, a.k.a. <laughs> an OG in the space. But yeah. uh, real quick announcements, guys. Uh, number one, patreon.com slash fresh fit, man. Get all the behind the scenes content there. Um, it's about to be the first of the month. So uh, go ahead and jump in midnight tonight, guys, so that you don't get charged twice. Um, and then speaking of which, we owe you guys a Zoom call. Uh, uh, that is we, true. We need to do it uh, this week, either Tuesday or Thursday of this week. We get you guys a Zoom call. Okay. Um, we, yeah, guys, we've been really busy. Um, the party planning has been taking up a lot of our time. Uh, we got we just found out that we got to spend another seven to ten thousand dollars for y'all. Um, but we're gonna do it, man, because we want this party. We're we're pulling. We're not holding back. And uh, you know that's just how it is. But anyway, check us out over there, patreoncom slash man. Also, speaking of the party, party's going to be January 14th, guys. It's going to be down here in Miami. Uh, we're going to have it at a rooftop spot. It's going to be awesome. It's costing us a lot of money, so that's why the, the ticket prices are a little bit higher, guys. Right now, tickets are on sale. Um, the 550 sale price is sold out, but now the tickets, I think, are going for about 1550 Now, remember, I know some of y'all are like, whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> what the hell? Guys, understand that the reason why the ticket prices are like that is because the venue is very expensive. We have celebrities showing up. We got security. It's and also on top of that, it's um it's a rooftop place. And yeah, we're having an open bar as well. Oh, I forgot yeah. to mention that. Did I mention open bar? Yeah. So, uh, and then we're gonna have a bunch of chicks and there as well. All your favorite girls from the show, other yeah. girls as well. So I mean, talk about networking and yeah, guys, we have to everything. keep it exclusive to a yeah. degree. Otherwise, it's, everyone's gonna overrun it, right? So. We have to keep um, ticket price at a certain level to keep certain people out. However, we are going to meet with all of you guys for absolutely free here in Miami prior to the party that come to support us before the one million party. So, you know, if you want to meet with us, take pictures, talk, etc. I'm going to shake each and every single one of y'all hands, you know, talk with you guys. And yeah, man, that's we're going to do that for absolutely free. Do a free meetup. So uh, and know, I don't know too many creators that actually meet with their, their supporters. Hell no. Most of mil- a million. Most don't. Guys. So like. There's a famous saying, never meet your idol because you might be disappointed. Guys, think about where that stems from. That typically stems, not saying that we're your idols, but I'm saying that people that you really uh, respect or people you might, uh, you know, like their music, their content, whatever it may be. The reason why they say don't meet your idol is because a lot of times they're going to let you down. And with me, I always say, okay, when I meet a supporter, I want to make sure that this saying is never something that applies to me. So, you know, we go out of our way a lot of the times to meet with supporters and everything for absolutely free, bro. So the party is just, you know, the cherry on top. But the main thing is we're going to meet y'all for free. Won't cost you a dime. If you can make it to Miami, we're going to meet you. Don't worry about it uh, without you spending a dollar. Also, guys, we're on Megaphone, okay? We're no longer on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all those other platforms. You got to check us out on Megaphone. On Megaphone, we put all the audio versions of the podcast. Mo is being really diligent, uploading every day pretty much, right, Mo? Yes. Or or three times a week? Okay. So check us out over there, guys. Uh, the two links are below. We got a Fresh Fit one, and we also have a Fresh Fit After Hours one. And then also, guys, if you want to chat with the other supporters that are going to probably be there at the party, go ahead and check us out on discord.gg slash Fresh Fit. You guys can, you know, set up to meet up when you guys come to Miami in uh, mid-January. Also, get the merch, com. Hoodies and T-shirts are all there. New designs being made as we speak right now. Shout out to Agent Fit. He's working on some of the concepts. And then also, guys, check out our other YouTube channel, Fresh Fit Clips. On there, we post three clips per day, two shorts per day. So we're getting really uh, heavy on that channel. Channel. We're almost at 300,000 subscribers on that one, so please go subscribe because 75% of the people are not subbed. Are not subbed to that goddamn channel. <laughs> that watch it, bro. <laughs> Including you. We caught you. <laughs> Even though it wasn't so good, sub to us, man. God damn it. Uh, all good, all so good. yeah, guys, go sub to the channel. And then also, fresh you out, talk about your vlog. Guys, the vlog channel is up, man. We did a vlog yesterday of us playing tennis. I did two versus one, and I dominated the field, man. Your boy's good at tennis, good at games. Whatever I play, I'm good at. Just know that when I touch the screen or the playing field, I'm there to win. So to go check out that vlog, man, 100K on the way. We're actually 2K away from 100K. So guys, if you don't mind, sub to the channel. 100K is almost there. 
And it, it didn't take seven years. Like there you go. Blocked on me. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because you had that channel since what? Twenty what? Twenty thirteen. Holy man! Yeah. God damn, bro. But well, hold on. <laughs> I didn't take it serious until like five years in, and then after pranks, I took it serious. So. All right. What? Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, check out my other YouTube channel. It's called Fed eighteen eleven on there. I break down criminal cases. I just uploaded the uh, Ted Bundy one. Uh, it went down midstream yesterday. Uh, because I was reacting to a documentary and, you know, YouTube has a stupid content ID thing where if they think that you're reacting to something that might be copyright protected, they're going to go and just go ahead and kill your stream. So what I did was I finished the recording, put it, it was on Twitch, took it off of Twitch, uh, re-uploaded it back on YouTube, put the timestamps in there. So it's up right now for you guys on Fed it. If you guys want to watch the Ted Bunny thing, I break down, you know, his upbringings, his prison escapes. So we had two of them, uh, the, the crazy murders we did, the interviews, executions, the trials, everything is there, man. I break it down nice and systematically, go through the entire Ted Bundy criminal investigation. And um, yeah, so it was, it was really one of my favorite breakdowns. You guys are still uh, liking it, even though the, it's doing really well for views right now, despite the fact that it was on Twitch and got taken off YouTube. So you guys are really enjoying it. I hope you guys uh, like, you know, the people that watch it like it. And then uh, I just finished filming the Osama bin Laden the Navy SEAL raid on Osama bin Laden's compound back in 2011 and also what they found in his house. You guys are going to find some really interesting things that they found in his house um, after the raid, right, when they declassified all the information. Um, so that's going to drop probably on Thursday, guys. So, yeah, go subscribe to uh, Fed It Man if you guys want something a little bit different. I don't know any other former feds on the YouTube breaking down criminal cases for y'all. But anyway, without further ado, man, we got Aaron Cleary in the house. Down the Marco. My Marco, favorite my dad. How many dads you got? Uh, one. Oh. <laughs> we look nothing alike. <laughs> Who is your mother? Shut up. I don't remember her. <laughs> Welcome back, Abby. Well, thanks for having me, guys. So, what's new with you, man? I mean, it's been a while since you've been well, on the podcast. He's got to introduce himself to the people first. Oh, yeah. Who are you again? Yeah, yeah. Can you introduce well, yourself? Because people well, might be like, who's this random guy? some new guys. In a 1950s yeah. shirt. Yeah, the 19... Well, this is my, my friend Athib got me this shirt, so I, I decided to wear it. Uh, I, I guess I'm the resident economist, finance guy of the Red Pill. Mm. Um, and if you have not delved into that realm, you probably may not know who I am. But uh, I guess my claim to fame in these here parts would probably be uh, Bachelor Pad Economics. Yes. And then my consultancy, Asshole Consulting. Yes. And so that's probably where most people would know me from here. Yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. You're the author of several um, really um, important books. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Bachelor Pad Economics is the first one I read where it's, I th you know, I recommend still to this day. Um, what other books have you written? Uh, as it pertains here, Poor Richard's Retirement. Yeah. That's uh, on how to get by on very little. Uh, I would say for your audience, uh, even though I know you two guys, Curse of the High IQ. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people that probably tune into alternative media, red pill, you're at least independent minded thinking. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> if you are very intelligent, mm -hmm. chances are you are statistically aberrant from the rest of the population and you might have some problems socializing, understanding, getting along. So that one's a little bit more. I wrote that one's a very good book. Yeah. Uh, I, I predominantly wrote a book called How Not to Become a Millennial. Uh, that one is, well, it's no joke. Cause if you look at the millennials, I mean, you got a lot of zoomers and younger people. And instead of trying to like, you should take your vitamins and work out and work hard. I'm like, look at the millennials. So you don't become like them. Mm. Uh, and for millennials, like, look, here's where you were lied to. Here's how things work in the real world. Here's how, you know, it's halftime for the millennials. You got the second half of the game to salvage your life. And here's where you got to got to change so that one is i'd say probably the aside from batch of pad economics that is probably the uh uh the most helpful and then uh i guess worthless mm -hmm. the young person's ind indispensable guide to choosing the right major um how many of you wrote oh, uh, well i forgot i forgot black man's got out of poverty yes, uh, yes a lot of younger guys you know have you have uh the brothers it's also latinos any disadvantaged group if you're coming from poverty minorities my, yeah, minorities but are really focused on the black community because, uh, well, they're the poorest and uh, they'd have. And the that's most. a fact. Yeah, that you is. Guy, a, that the, is the, that's a, before you guys. Oh, who's this racist white guy on the podcast? That's a fucking fact. <laughs> and he's basically teaching you guys how to not be victims. God damn it. But sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Continue. Uh, So there's that one. And then, oh, uh, as it pertains to dating and relationships, my two most recent books, the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women which was an actuarial study on what you guys are getting when you chase tail. Yeah. Uh, unintelligently. You yeah, can yeah. chase tail, but you got to do it the right way. But mm. just what a horrific cost it is. Yeah. And uh, not to, I'm not giving away the book, but cash outlays, cash outlays on average, you're going to spend $265,000 cash. Don't even talk about what you could have done with it. Uh, and then the menu life without the opposite sex. That's the more recent one. 
Um, and that one, though it has a very macabre, dark, uh, pessimistic view, uh, half the women are forecasted to not be married by 2030 between marrying ages, like a little bit under 45%. And that means half the guys aren't going to be married. And if any of you guys had an intention of handling family or getting married, some of a more traditional approach, I, I, I hate to say it for half the population, men and women, uh, women just aren't that interested. And so, uh, <laughs> and, and as much as we may like to, um, think otherwise, like, oh, we know, rah, rah, rah. I think deep down inside your, your biology and genetics is, yeah, I'd like to have a family. I'd like to have a woman. I'd like to have some kids, but that, biological two million year human evolution hardwired drive is going to be moot and irrelevant for half the population. And so I, unfortunately the guy who was the actuary who helped me with the math and the statistical analyses on the book of numbers, he took his life. Uh, and so, and cause among other reasons we speculate cause we don't know, uh, because he was not going to find the wife and the kids. Yeah. And so instead of people, um, hitting the, the delete button, uh, it's like, here's things you can do yeah. outside of life that still gives you purpose and reason and fulfillment. Yeah. And so I said, I, I, I'm sure there's some other ones that don't, but uh, those are the main, the main ones, flagship uh, products that I have. Yeah. Wow. And, and the thing I like about your books, uh, you know, is that you, you, you take, you actually do quite a bit of research and you mm -hmm. look at the numbers and you actually like crunch the numbers from all, I mean, cause you have an economist background mm -hmm. anyway, and background in finance. Um, is you're just able to be like, okay, this is the, you know, this is the percentage of this and this, this is what your chances are of getting this and this. And when you actually show the numbers, it's pretty grim, man. It's very um, grim. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think, <sighs> let's be honest here. A big reason why so many guys hurt themselves or put themselves in bad situations where they think that they're hopeless or whatever it may be is because they don't know the truth. They think that there's a girl out there that's for them or she's the one or whatever, but it's sometimes it's a lot easier for you to operate when you know, it's not in my control, God damn it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, this is just the world this is how it is. And I can either cry about it or adapt. And I think where people a lot of the times come, you know, with this, you know, what do I want to call delete themselves, right? Mm -hmm. you, keep it YouTube friendly when they want to delete themselves. That comes from not knowing the truth. Absolutely. Know? I think a lot of people want to know how to be rich or get laid. And in both cases, you're dealing with a lot of variables that you don't control. Yeah. There's a lot of things you don't control. And so stoicism and, and knowing what you do and do not control is vital. And what I've aimed for in pretty much all my works is not one of happiness or, oh, I got I got a harem and, and all this in marriage, because a lot of that is outside of your control, but knowing what reality is. Because then at minimum, at minimum, you're not confused. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I'll, I'll cite the millennials. I cannot imagine how many people in their late 20s and early 30s, now even approaching 40, are still confused, like why they can't find a job, why they have student loan debt, why can't they get the girls, why can't this, why can't that? And if you had just taken a look at empirical reality, set aside your desires, set aside your political leaning, set aside what you wanted out of life, and looked at it as a scientist with like aliens up in outer space, say, all right, what is happening? What is the reality? At minimum, you would understand why you're in the situation you're in. At, at best, then, all your decisions are now based in reality, and they're going to be effective. And you can drastically improve your situation because now your decisions are based in reality, and you're getting the real world to work for you rather than you trying to cajole or beg the, the world to do your bidding or what you'd like. So I got a question for you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. You are born in the 70s, so you've you know been around for a little bit, quite a bit of experience, right. which builds wisdom upon it. Um, you know, we all heard the American dream, right? The white pick offense. Mm -hmm. Wife at home, two kids, nuclear family, mm -hmm. right? With the backbone of what built the United States in the first place. Um, is it fair to say from, you know, you, just your research, the amount of books you've written, looking at the opposite gender, seeing how intersexual dynamics have changed drastically, uh, especially within the confinements of a wedding and or a marriage and a nuclear family. Would it be fair to say from, uh, you know, your research that that dream of the um, of the American dream with that white picket fence and a wife and a family is virtually gone for most yes. American guys. A absolutely. Um, and the reason why is uh, one simple founding uh, contract or tenet or principle for yeah. all civilizations yeah. was men and women getting together to form families. Yeah. And the reason they did that is for love or just wanted to pass on your genetics and all that. But in that transaction, nearly all of economic production was made predominantly by men. Mm. That, was, that was the deal. The men would go out and work, fight, defend, 
take on nature and protect and provide for women and the children. Yeah. Technology has come in uh, where a lot of that hard labor is automated. You know, you're not plowing the, the fields with a, a, a mule uh, that's yeah. done by a machine and done by AI, yeah. which, has all, which has brought about a ton of economic production and standards of living and, yeah. and better quality of life. But it has also obsoleted men's traditional role. Now women can support themselves very easily through various white collar work. Mm -hmm. And then also you throw in um, uh, all this huge economic production and a combination of democracy uh, for better or worse. Uh, and people tend to vote in out of kindness, I would say a welfare state. Oh, we should help out this. We should mm -hmm. help out that. Yeah. And now either because women could support themselves and no longer need men. And there's an insurance policy in the form of various government welfare programs, be it WIC or welfare or section eight housing. Mm -hmm. Women no longer need men. And I've said this before, and I'm 100% sure I'm right about it. Uh, men are the economic engines of this or any other economy. And if you take away female youth and beauty, that is the fuel that goes and powers those engines. And there is no fuel. We mm. have, there are women, some of which are beautiful, not a lot, but some. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm being dead. I'm 100% no, 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 no. sure. And, and, and I'm laughing because I've read your book. Right, so that's why, right. and you can break it down for them well, why. Yeah, I mean, we'll okay, let, me, let me ask you this. You yeah. guys, are you inspired to go and fight for Lizzo or Lizzo? Nope. Of course. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, and, and even if you did, there was a pretty girl. Are these pretty girls like, oh, I'd like to support my man and be the kind stay-at-home wife? I mean, I mean, are they even on the same page as no. getting married? No. And so, you know, it, it's hilarious to me watching the mainstream media yeah. and old fart economists, uh, Lawrence Summers. I don't know if you guys remember him. He was in the Bill Clinton, uh, I think, dean of Harvard at one time. Mm -hmm. These these laughable jokes of washed-up boomer economists are like, oh, I don't know why boys aren't working anymore and living at home. And I, and every time I get a chance with this tweet, <laughs> fat chicks with tattoos, next question. That's it. And so now women have the right to What percentage of women are obese nowadays in the United States? Oh, 70%. It depends on your age range. Bam. You know. There you go. You got the numbers yeah. off for it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So women, between, let's say between 20, what? Let's say between 18 to 35. I still think it's, it's. Uh, I'd have to look up the numbers again, but I still think it's in the high 60s. It's in the high 60s, Yeah, right? because it's, it's sad. Now, They're men considered are considered overweight or obese? Overweight and obese. Okay. Depends on what your definition is obese with the BMI. I'm just going overweight because I'm sorry, girls. I, I don't like overweight chicks and no guy does. I don't care what the media told you. That's true. Yeah. Um, even adjusting like the age, like you're younger, you should have higher metabolism. They're just a little bit below their 60 year old counterparts in terms of obesity and overweight. Same with men as well. I'm not, I'm not just slamming on the gals here, but yeah. And, and I've said that before, like, look, if you're overweight, male or female, you're not serious about a love life. You, you're just not, you, you love food more. You love sloth more. You love laziness more. <laughs> you do you by by your choice, by your choice of like, I'm going to stuff this ho-ho in my mouth or shoot up with heroin. Whatever. Choice is everything. It tells you everything you want to know. You prefer to do the thing you did than the thing you did not do. And it is becoming more and more apparent. Uh, we can use food as an example, but all these various life choices yeah. that women and men make indicates very few people are interested in helping out or satisfying or beginning a relationship with another person. Okay. Yeah. If, right. if this was different, think, think about what the world or the people rather would look like if women were serious about marriage, <clears throat> as would be men. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have the people of Walmart. Uh, women would be svelte or svelter. Mm -hmm. uh, women would dress without... What is with Miami girls and having their their pants up above their belly button. Is that a thing? <laughs> That's like it, more like the uh, culture because it's a sunny state. You know, they want to show off their, their stomach. Well, well, the eighties and nineties are, are making a comeback with oh. the high waisted pants. And then some of these girls are wearing dad jeans as well. Okay. It's weird. Well, and then, and then luckily here in Miami, we don't have as many fat girls, but it's a trend in general because okay. it allows fatter women to not look so right. Bad. So, but yeah, the, you go out in public. No one is serious about putting in the effort that is required to attract, maintain, and satisfy a member of the opposite sex. Good point. Yeah. And so whether you're a girl, I mean, and God bless the girls that stay thin and are demure and feminine, shocked, that's what guys want. And God bless the guys who go to the gym and work out, work hard. But the rest of the people, it's almost you want to say, look, shut up about the opposite sex if you're not going to put in the effort. Yeah. And, and if yeah. you're not going to, and decide now. If the food is more important to you, enjoy the food. 
but don't don't complain. Don't complain or rue yeah. or lament or ah, men don't like fat chicks. Like just go fishing or something else. So I like that you put in your books and your videos the truth no matter what. And right. I, as a result, if I know the truth and I want that result, mm -hmm. I gotta change. Right. So <laughs> that by itself says, you know what? If you really want to get married and have a have a family, then you being masculine, you being out of shape, you not caring what men want, whose fault is that? Mm -hmm. So complaining about men, no, it's your fault. Right. Right. But I, I would even go so far, and, and this is perhaps a little bit into the weeds, but it's a good, interesting philosophical thought I think every man should consider, is we're at the first time in human history where women really don't need men. Yeah. Yeah. It is an option. You can work and support yourself. If not, you have a government uh, welfare net to kind of take care of would you. Would you say that is the main, just to go back to that first question, mm -hmm. would you say that's the root cause as to why that American white picket fence dream is done with, with, yes, with for, mo because, for most guys out for there. For most guys, unfortunately. Right. Yes. It used to be you could be an average dude right. working a factory job, making the equivalent, you know, in today's dollars of fifty thousand dollars a year, and you'd be able to have a dutiful wife at home with you. Fred Flintstone and, and Barney Rubble. That type yep. of thing, right? And you'd right. be able to, you know, have an honest day's wage and have a woman at home waiting for you. That dream is done for most that's guys gone. because women no longer need men. They no longer need men. And that's okay. where I think my right. my observation, though it may seem pessimistic, I cannot help but conclude that women just never like guys that much to begin with anyway. Yeah. Beforehand, they kind of needed guys. Now that they don't, you've removed any kind of uh, requirement yeah. or dependency on men. We're seeing girls in their um, true state, I guess, for lack of a yeah. better way of this. Uh, hypergamy, untethered. Uh, untethered, unregulated. Like, okay, here, you have choice now. What are you doing? They're not choosing guys. Yeah. That's certainly not it. Now, one could argue feminism has kind of moved that along in an ideological or philosophical sense. Um, you could also say uh, advertising corporate media, like, ooh, look at this style of lifestyle. But I'm I'm thinking like, yeah, but that wouldn't be enough to overcome like true, like you're, you guys still want girls with big boobs, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, not. I mean, we have, for our biology, you could put as many Lizzo's and things in front of us and fat overweight Victoria's Secrets models. We're like, no, you're lying to us. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I would also then have to concur or, or assume that women's hardcore biology was no, also not changed and not different. It's just now it's exposed finally. Yeah. Yes. Like, in other words, feminism isn't like, oh, so craftily written and such a good, clever ideology it has overridden women's deep down biological urges to be loved and cared for i'm thinking it's just a, a rationalization after the fact i think women just really never like guys that much in the first place unless and here's where you guys have done some amazing work where you guys because let's just admit me and rollo and the old guys were old farts we're like, all right, remember when we walked up to girls with a flower and said, would you go to the sock hop with me <laughs> but you guys uh, uh explored and highlighted the effect of social media where now women have had on this unlimited choice yeah um which is which has further accelerated the hypergamy and 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 and, and brought it into, into full light and so now that we have kind of like like that it's like oh wow like they these girls really they they generally don't like most guys and if they're gonna go for a guy and this is where your guys' work and the groundwork came in they're only going to go for, I remember when we first started talking, you're saying like, Clary, it's, it's like 15%. It ain't, it ain't like the top half. It's 15%. You got, I'd imagine by now, <laughs> three years later, it's what, top 10%? I would say seven now. Yeah, yeah I think we're in single digits right now. Yeah. Seven, five. Yeah, I mean, you know. the guys that are actually like out there hooking up with girls on command, making it seem mm -hmm. easy, having as many girls they want, whatever. Yeah, it's it's slim pickings, man. Right. Most guys are out here uh, struggling. I mean, and that and we're hey, we're no different. Like we've had situations where we have a tough time even with girls, even with the uh, with money or status, whatever it may be. So mm -hmm. it's like if we're experiencing hell, he's seen Trey songs get denied. So no one is immune from it. So that's your Bullshit. point. We just recently saw Tom Brady get divorced, right? right? And if Tom Brady has that trouble. The average person has no chance. But I will say this: there's Facts. hope because and Giselle's old as hell. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, bro, like these yeah. they, 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 yeah. they, that, that that situation with Tom Brady highlights um, just the, the hubris of modern day women, where she thinks ego. I am gonna go ahead <clears throat> and break up with this guy, right? Mm. Um, because he works too much or whatever the hell it is, right? I'm no longer happy, and I can go ahead and find someone else. 50, 60 years ago, 
women would not be doing that type of shit. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, uh, well, I'm too old. I'm, I can't get a guy like that. But we've indoctrinated and lied to women so much, telling them that as they get older, their value goes up alongside it. We've yeah. almost trained them to be like pseudo males to a degree that their value goes up as they age. And the reality is it doesn't. I mean, scary thing. Remember the new question we've been asking our girls? Do you think you have more value now or later or in your 30s? You know what? Almost every girl said, Aaron, in, in the, the 30s, 30s. Right. But, which but, is shocking. <clears throat> let me let me ask you guys this, though. Yeah. Is that because of propaganda or is it they just think about it, they just don't like guys that much. See, that's and that's really and, and I I don't want to be so dark. Yeah. But man, my theory explains everything. You know, like mm-hmm. when um, not Newton. Uh, well, it was Newtonian physics, you know, like, well, how do we predict like they they had discovered Jupiter and Saturn and they couldn't find out where Neptune was. They, but they said, well, based on the laws of gravity and the patterns that we're seeing with the planets we have discovered, there should be another planet out there. And Neptune was both was discovered not by visual uh, confirmation. confirmation. It was done by two mathematicians who were in a race. I think one was in France, one was in uh, England, but we're to the point where I can't think of any other theory yeah. that explains all of the behavior that fits so well with the empirical evidence that we're seeing. Got what you're saying. Yeah. And so there's no other conc- logical conclusion well, that you can come to outside of that. We could always be missing something. Mm-hmm. And you always try if you go with the best theory that describes the physical real world phenomena that you're seeing. And so far, this is the best one that I've seen, but it would explain like a uh, uh, Giselle, why are you getting rid of Tom Brady? What if she doesn't care that much yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? So I would just add to that point and say, I think it's ego. Just because for the matter of fact, women will get, for example, a degree, they'll get a job, say I'm independent, I'm boss, babe, right? Mm-hmm. But then they say, I don't need a man, but I want a man, right? Right. And the man that they want on some level gives them a huge benefit. Mm-hmm. Either successful, way more than them, could take could take her down. It's only for, upside. For Good yeah. point, Fresh. It's, right? oh, it's only upside. Yeah. So at that yeah. point, it's like, cool. This guy that I actually want gives me all these benefits. Now, here's the problem, right? When you get that guy, and then you, they say the bullshit. We can grow together. Together. When in reality, the guy's already been grown, bitch. You're <laughs> growing by yourself. It's not equal. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> so, 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 so that's that point. When they finally get this guy, he's provided providing him a lifestyle, maybe money as well, maybe a certain type of like you know high value status. Mm. And as a result, with that uh, new up- upcoming, it's a cool. Not at this like level of status and the level of like lifestyle. This is me. I did this shit. Yeah. And that ego says, you know what? I could do it better without him. I can find somebody else or be on my own. And when they leave the person, they find out, oh wait, hold on a second. I can't do myself. I need somebody like him to be by my side. So as yeah, a result, that's the reality. It's the ego. <laughs> I can do it by, by myself. I don't need a man. I find a man I want. I get him. Uh, you know what? I could do it all by myself as well. So my but, thing is, it's the ego. Nope. But notice how we're already talking about things that are outside the relationship. Yeah. She's in a, she's looking at a uh, lifestyle career, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. you should excel and optimize that to the best of your ability, but she's willing to give up the love. Like there was never love in the calculus of that. Not mm. once did that enter the analysis. Mm. And so I, I think we're kind of erroneous here, at least based on what I've seen, why would she throw away Tom Brady? I can't believe it. Him, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, what if she never liked them that much? Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying women don't like men. I'm not saying women uh, hate men. I mean, I'm sure some do in a large enough population. Women like men. They would like to get married. They would, but nowhere near, nowhere near as much as men. And so when you put it in, in that context, it's kind of, I, I did a, an example like, Men would like sex, certainly sex, maybe marriage and children as much as oxygen. Women want children and men and sex as much as a Pizza Hut pizza. You know, like, yeah, I'll have it. But, yeah. oh, and so, again, that would explain where they're so easily uh, uh, convinced to pursue things outside of love and, and sex and romance and family. Because I don't I think they were invested in it as much as a free piece of Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah. Because yeah. you know? when did Giselle get with him? Like in her 20s? It was, it was a long time. It was yeah, a while ago. At least like, what, you know, 20, 30 years? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it. I, I don't know how old she is now. I know someone in the chat's going to put it. But I mean, it, I've always, uh, you know, I was just thinking about this while you guys were talking. Options are the lubricant of divorce and breakups for women. And that's the truth. Like they, if, if a woman thinks that she can do better. She's going to go ahead and enact on that. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you, the, the main thing that we didn't have any issues back in the 50s or this, you know, this era that I was talking about before with this pick offense is that women understand that their value uh, back then at least understood their value derived from their beauty and their youth. 
Nowadays, women think that their value is derived from masculine traits, their income and their status. So they think I could push the clock back too, like a man, but the reality is they can't. And it's not until they become older and they actually experience, right? They're dried up options that they come back to reality. You know, Donovan Sharp, uh, you know, always says, shout out to him. And I agree with him 100% on this. Women start to mature when they stop getting more, uh, as many options as they had when they were in their, in their youth. And I agree with that 1000%. That's when they wake up and they realize, holy shit, I rode the carousel and I fucked up. We did a breakdown of that woman uh, that was a Playboy writer, right? Mm-hmm. That was running around whoring herself. And she wrote a really powerful article um, uh, about her being a hoe back in the past and how she regrets all of it and how it fucked her up having her having mm-hmm. a bunch of meaningless sex, sex. But she believed that, you know, that sex in the city lifestyle hook, line and sinker fell for it. And then she regrets it later on. So it's not until women really start to lose their options that they say, holy fuck, what am I doing? And then they wake up and then that's when they get the RPs when the options don't hit them anymore. And you know what's scary? Well, I was, I was going to go 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 point out, okay, they may regret it, but do you see 50 plus, 40 plus year old women saying, okay, now I'm going to, oh, I'm serious now. And I'm like, no, they don't. Like, you yeah, don't, you don't see it. Settle, say I'm not going to settle. Yeah. Still yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, again, like, oh yeah, I screwed up. They could admit they're wrong. Yeah. There could be regret and they're hundred percent honest and true. And oh yeah, it did F me up and I did pass up on the good guy, but I still don't see the, it's time to get serious and find the guy who maybe isn't dressed the nicest, but ha- is good looking enough. And I should really look at his, his background or I don't know, ladies, a guy's personality that you love and he makes you laugh at that's not scene yeah. <laughs> it's just not happening but so. you know what's scary about this like on the show we ask girls all the time what is the man that you want actually want they don't know or even care to know and a matter of fact is bro to be honest with you don't give a fuck and, and then we'll oh, say it and they'll be like what that's yeah. misogynistic yeah and, and we, you're like what and the then we tell them to their face <laughs> okay. Okay. just so you know this is what, what guys actually want oh it should be this way no nah, that's not right and it's like or you're wrong yeah that's and I'm not like, true do they even care not at all bro here but it's the definition of solipsism. Yeah. Like it, it, I always get, we, how long have we been on this planet and women are still clutching their pearls. Oh my God. <laughs> he wanted to have a threesome with a big boobed woman. Oh! <laughs> like, Oh my God. He looked at the younger woman. Somebody do something. You're like, <laughs> well, yeah. And, but I would, I would say that's more, probably conditioning like men ought to be this way men ought to be that way but we can we can talk about what they say and what they write in the end what is their action do you see do you see a bunch of women roughly my age who are hitting the wall and saying oh my god i've been passing up on love this entire time i better think about what men want and i'm going to get my ass to the gym or do we see a bunch of fat walmart people who are in the 40s and 50s and we we have our answer Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so I, I'm sure again, women like men, they'd like to have men, but they're all, if they're going to have a guy in their life, they're going to commit their time to it. It's going to have to be a top tier guy. And as we saw with what Brady, uh, what there's been a whole, uh, uh, Bezos uh, Gates, although those guys were kind of nerdy, I guess. You, you, uh, even even, even roll old man roll was there. Um, uh, <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki's wife yeah. uh, abandoned and he was a fighter pilot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he is a no joke guy. Mm-hmm. And after a while, and it's this isn't pessimism. <laughs> we're not doing this because because we're like, oh, we're down in the mud. We're going to get those rascally women. It's really wow, t- Yeah. Tom Brady can't do it. Robert Kiyosaki can't do it. Like, OK, well, then, guys, getting back to the book of numbers. Look, you got one life. Do you want to waste it chasing tail and getting divorced or being miserable? That's probably the worst outcome. Yeah. And and just pulling teeth with a girl. Or do you want to go live your one shot in life? Do the best you possibly can. God bless you if a girl comes along and she's with you. But man, you 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 guys said it right. There's a ton of sims on what, Twitch or something like yeah. that? You we gotta unplug these guys for the sim machine. You got because they are just wasting their lives. I think it's important just to add to this point as well. If you're going to know the truth, have some hope behind it. Because my thing, knowing the truth and not having a plan to, to take action mm. can actually hurt you. So, Cappy, next question for you, I guess, is... Before we do that question real quick, oh, we'll kill the Twitch kill, stream Twitch real, real quick. Yeah, 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 kill the Twitch stream, kill yeah. the Facebook stream, and the Twitter stream, guys. Come on over to YouTube. Uh, type in Fresh and Fit. Come on over to YouTube, guys. We're going to kill the Twitch and all the other streams Why? Do right we now. do something bad? Or... Nah, no, no. no, no. Said, we'll, we'll, but that, oh, yeah, but that's fine. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, 
yeah, just come on over, guys. Come on, guys. And um, yeah, come on over, and then we'll get into the next question. And then we'll read the chats as well, guys. Don't worry. We see that oh, shoot, the chats are the piling chats. up. It, you want to do chats before you ask this question? Or just real quick. Yeah. Okay. So, Cappy, we know we shouldn't get married at all, at least nowadays. Mm-hmm. But what is the hope for guys? Or what should they focus on now, knowing the truth? Because I feel like if a guy knows the truth, all right, dude, I know the truth. It's kind of depressing. What's the next step? The, well, first of all, so let's, let's never use the word hope. Okay, Mm -hmm. hope is outsourcing your control and agency to fate. Mm -hmm. All right, that doesn't work. There is no hope. That's the truth. And when you realize there is no hope, you realize, okay, it's only me that's going to do this and affect these changes in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying don't give up on girls. I mean, there, there are good quality girls out there. They happen to be in a minority. But I would say, all right, what is the empirical reality? I have, and you want to know what should motivate men, I guess is the better question. They're going to die. This ends, you know, you got about 50, you got about, what are you, 12, 13? So you got about 70 years. Dad, you should know my age, man. Come on, dad. You should know my age, man. I I got maybe 30. Rolo could die next week. We don't know. (laughs) Uh, But but you're going to die. And do you want to, like, think about most of you, most guys have been chasing girls and uh, expending at minimum mental resources pursuing these girls since they were 13. And. It has not, I don't know about you guys, but it wasn't an addition or uh, an improvement upon my life. Worrying about girls, chasing girls, uh, all the, all the, gosh, darn near all your economic production and going to colleges to impress, buying cars to impress girls. Not that we know anybody like that, but it's after Wait, a while. What, what, what are you trying to say, Cappy? Uh, uh, <laughs> I bought them for me, Kathy. I bought the cars for oh, me. Yeah, you're gonna get to me. <laughs> but uh, maybe not you, but certainly most guys. We nah, admit. I'm just wondering about yeah, yeah. the girls, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Skip that. And taxes. But, yeah. And ta- well, yeah, that's true. But um, it's that's that's how as well, as an economist, look, you only got time. Mm. And I think what men need to do is wake up remove this idealism, even if it is your hardwired genetics from your eyes and look at it and say, all right, I have wasted this much time, money, effort, and resources on this thing with very little rate of return. I, before I pass out and and go to the forever eternal, how about I go on an adventure, get into good physical shape, enjoy some good food, get a career I enjoy, get my finances together. So, I mean, do you know how, how little you guys could get on if you don't chase girls? And do you know if you don't chase girls and you get your financial act together, you know what is there is a higher chance of getting girls? Getting girls. <laughs> yes. And so true. I think for men, it, it again gets back to the empirical reality. What should I be doing with my time? You should be enjoying your life and improving yourself. As a fringe benefit to that, many other people have, have made this point. In pursuing excellence, you will improve your chances with women. But I would also say the main reason you should do that is so you do not waste your time. So if men are looking for some kind of real, what kind of hope is there? There is no hope. I mean, there's a little bit you could control, a little bit you could do if you really want a woman in your life. I'm not saying don't pursue that, but there is no hope. What you gotta be more concerned about is you're gonna die here in the several decades, some more than others, uh, and then it's over. And then do you wanna be 72 years old, three divorces, piss poor with nothing to hand off, no legacy? Or do you want to say, man, I sailed around the world or I wrote a book or I uh, well, I geeked out my garage and made a, a widget that does this thing. I was a brewmeister. I made some homemade scotch, anything. And, heck, I just we chilled. I, I went for yeah. a hike and chilled out, went for a walk. You know, like Schopenhauer, I know how much you guys know about author Schopenhauer. He was a philosopher and he kind of, you know, and all he did was went for a daily walk. Mm-hmm. In the force, I think in Germany or Austria, and you know what? That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. So that's that's what I would say is death should be your motivator, and you shouldn't be dependent upon hope. Don't waste yeah. any days. I've said that before too. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys, if you die tomorrow, is anyone going to give a fuck? And if yeah. the answer is no, then you got a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the reality. Is a lot of you guys watching right now, you could die tomorrow, not no one's going to give a shit about you. You'll just be some random name in the obituary, and then bam, dead and gone. No one cares. It is what it is. But you know, you want to leave a legacy behind so that when you when, when you do pass away, number one, people feel it. And then number two, people remember you. And here's this, this, this crazy part about this is a double edged sword. One side. Right. The more you're loved. Nine out of ten times 
there's gonna you're gonna be hated as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just as many people that love you for you changing their life, you're gonna offend a lot of people as well. Because for you, in order to make impact, you must be okay with hurting people's feelings. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Absolutely. Especially when you're pursuing the truth, you know, and that's just how it goes. So, you know, I've made peace with that, but my thing is. Can you die tomorrow and die a happy man and know that you changed the world? And most of you guys can't say yes. And mm -hmm. if the answer is no to that question, you got to work to a point where if you do die, you'll be happy to die. And I know that sounds very negative, but that's what it's got to be, guys. Enough guys. Uh, uh, no, too, too many guys are just existing and they're not living. Mm -hmm. Two different things. we got some chats here. Okay. I'll hit some of these chats real fast. Um, okay. So uh, we got here. Shout, shout out to all you guys, by the way. All right. So we got here a dollar from Michael Trillstein. Thank you so much. Top Juice says free Kanye. Thank you, bro. Uh, Mike James again goes Top Juice says fresh must be pushed off couch. Top Juice says big mo nutta butter in my girl eye. Okay. Y'all giving out free game. Thank you, Zeus. Uh, Jason Records goes uh, happy Hollows Eve. We You guys need to do an intervention for your boy. Have he's coach Greg Adams with him like a kid who brought home <laughs> bad grades. Hey, man. I mean, we, we don't got, like I said, we're cool with both of them. And, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and bad mouth Hafiz, guys, because I'll tell you guys this. When we were going through that bullshit where everyone on YouTube decided to just try to come at and attack us, like, we're not going to do that to somebody else. Hafiz is a good guy. Um, you know, we don't agree on everything. You know, we actually had this discussion with Hafiz on marriage. Oh, about marriage. Like, like and we, almost uh, like a year and a half ago, guys. We disagreed, but at the same time, he has his opinion. We have our opinion. Yeah. There's facts in between, but we, so as don't men, wait. Do you guys maturely disagree on something and still remain friends after that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Yes, it's possible, man. This yeah. fear, the sphere could use it. Yeah, yeah we could, yeah. man. We definitely could. I mean, yeah. So making a bunch of hit pieces on him is is definitely not. You guys yeah. are not going to catch us making hit pieces on people we've nope. collaborated with or we're cool with, even if we disagree with them. We can make our, um, own, our own content. Yeah. And, and, I, and I really dislike how everyone is like trying to like just get a quick dollar off of it. Like, let me just react to this and, you know, bash a feast. It's kind of lame. You know, it's like, bro, just just make your own content. Like, why do you always have to go ahead and react to other creators in this space and trying to put them down? Like, that's just that's just lame to me, man. Uh, I, I guarantee you, go you're going to have your day where you messed up, too, as well. Mm -hmm. And it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to come back to you because, yep. you, you, for example, let's say he messes up today. Right. Or right, you might have a slip up where you said something dumb or out of place. Guess what? They're going to do, do they're going to do it to you, you as well. So my thing is, like, at least have some reverence reverence for a person on that level mm. yeah so. yeah so yeah man like i said before we're, we're not going to jump on the hate uh yeah. wagon you know we're cool both guys uh both guys are smart dudes sharp dudes content creators good people um we know them outside of the content creation world so uh you know we're not going to be like all these other bandwagon people trying to you know get a quick uh you know sound <laughs> trying to get some views you know what i mean yeah. uh early congratulations on one million today is your day thank you so much rep and time Bro. fitness uh how to prepare financially <laughs> don't get married i lost 70 percent of all my money don't worry we're going to talk about getting your money in order with aaron as well we're just kind of setting the stage for y'all to understand where the hell we are uh 70 of all my money assets and home equity on divorce and it has set me back a decade yeah i know mm -hmm. bro I, I, you be talking tough. about that shit all the time michael Chosen, if we hit one million fresh can have my girls tonight okay i tried mike's girls already you don't want them okay <laughs> 20 bucks for fresh bbc impossible this man could never be your father fresh because it it was it was he if he was, then I would not exist. And another thing, this man dress game is completely non-existent, but yours is top tier. <laughs> also, any questions, please do a DNA test. Okay. Uh, just made a new video on doing an early congratulations to you guys for 1 million. Thank you, Reppin' Time Fitness. Walk along the razor thin. Yep, there you go. Uh, this Carlson grad spits straight fire. Okay. Uh, some of you guys might not know who Aaron is. It's been a while since he's been on the show. It's been a bit. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, he's a new face you for a lot of you guys. You should have seen his shoes, man. Ancient. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah he, he wears the dad shoes, guys. Moses Walk. Fresh, can you have your cameraman and live stream the party for you and follow you around? We'll be lit, okay? Actually, yeah, I can, actually. Cappy looking real nice, man. I guess you can polish a turd. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, these are my yeah, these are my fans. Yeah. Uh, every man needs to watch Money Monday's God's Work. Yep. Uh, Paul Paul Pender Pedersen goes, first time catching a live show. I had to show my support. Thanks for the content, guys. Hopefully Fresh doesn't read my chat. Yeah, that would suck. Uh, <laughs> you would want a refund. 3K subs until 1 mil. Good stuff, fellas. Yep, absolutely, man. And we did it without backstabbing people that we work with in the fucking past. All right. That's, that's, I, I pride myself on that is that, you know, we'll bash like, you know, people outside of the space, like fuck that. Right. They're blue pill losers. Who, who gives a shit? Right. They're, they're simps. But when it comes to people in this space that are on for male self-improvement, whatever it may be. Yeah, man, that's not, it's not the way to go. We're, we already got the world against us guys at this point. Yeah. Uh, yo, are there going to be baddies at the party? Yes, they are. I'm probably going to buy the VIP ticket. Am I allowed to bring my, my CCW? If I don't drink, going to have my Rolex. Uh, I don't think you'll be allowed to bring it into the party, my no. friend. Rip and Tie Fitness, share our community tab. Thank you. 
uh, 10 bucks from S- Samoan Bam goes, thanks for everything. Shout out to the Discord OGs, best Discord in the universe. Love you guys. Pause. Uh, bought my 1 million ticket, booked a hotel flight for six days, all paid with the Amex points. See you in January. Hey, shout out to you. Good Javier, job, uh, HSK found you guys in July. Two days after my breakup, you guys changed my life. I'm 18, and y'all are a big part of me now going through my with self-deletion. Thank you, awesome. bro. Awesome. I could awesome. go on and on, but I thank you all. Uh, shout out to Myron Freshmo and Chris Keep Leaning. Yo, shout out to Marco for you, my friend. Yeah. 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 You, my friend, are one of the many guys that found our content and kept from uh, you know ending your life, and we're really happy. Those types of messages is why we do this uh, stuff. You know, It's worth all the hate that I get from the Shaniquas. It's worth all the hate that I get from the SJWs. It's worth all the hate that I get from everyone else that basically says that we're racist, bigots, assholes, misogynists, and toxic jerks. Misogyny. Um, it, you know, it's worth all the TikTok bans, the Instagram bans that we dealt with. Uh, getting the channel hit with strikes and shit like that. It's all worth it to help you guys live another day and realize the truth and keep yourselves from hurting yourselves. Peace, bro. Bros, y'all are less than 5K away from that million. That's fire. Love y'all and keep putting in that work. And that's from OG. Thank you. Thanks, Silent Sir, Serap. Hey, Martin, I'm unfortunately 5'4 and weigh somewhere between 128 to 135, struggling to gain more. What can I do to get my weight up? I'm also trying to build muscle. High protein intake, count your calories, my friend. Put yourself in a two to 300 calorie surplus every single day. You'll gain the weight. Trust me. KVBVL goes five bucks all the way from Great Brands. Sub FNF, do you guys think if your girl breaks up with you, it's a reflection on your inadequacy as a man that you need to be better at something? 100%. Uh, you know, girls typically look for security, and if you're not able to dis, uh, provide that in some degree, they're gonna leave leave you. Whether you didn't have money, maybe you don't have frame, maybe you don't have, uh, you're not attractive, maybe you don't have um, uh, your fitness in order. Typically, women prefer to have a guy that has all these traits in one. But most girls have to settle and, you know, accommodate to what a guy's weaknesses are. But they can only tolerate so much of that. Yeah, all you can do is improve every single day, and that's your best weapon, bro. Improving every day. Yep, absolutely, bro. Uh, w, and then keep in mind, we just discussed this with Aaron. Girls are indoctrinated to think that there's a bigger, better deal out there somewhere, and they're incentivized to leave you guys, okay? Yeah. Society, right? Uh, if Options, like I said before, is the lubricant of divorce and breakups for women. That's why they overwhelmingly initiate breakups. Feminism is here, and it's told women that they can do better. I think the power is if you put every single day and you become better, even if she leaves you, you can find somebody else. Yeah. So. W Fresh Fit, W Chat, W Members, W Moderators, Top G, Big Mo. Okay. W in the chat. Here we go. Roll oh, roll to in the fucking oh, house. <laughs> goes, Cappy is the perfect guest for Halloween show. He hates kids coming to his door begging for stuff. Happy Halloween, you old bugger. <laughs> uh, uh, well, according to Aaron, you don't have many more years left on this yeah, earth. I mean, uh, Rolo, you're old. Rolo, can I have your, your guitars? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a woman that said she didn't need a man that did not have at least one male friend. If a woman wants to test her need for a man, she needs to cut off all her male friends first. Yeah, that's true. Mm. What's good, fellas? Myron, I don't know if Mo told you, but you briefly appeared on NBC News when they did a report on the Me Too backlash and how Gen Z men hate feminism and watch Manosphere and Andrew Tate. You know, real quick, let's let's uh, because you showed me this as well. I want to talk to you about this, Aaron. Um, when we last what la- had you here, the Manosphere had not exploded into the mainstream media like it has now. You know, us, Andrew Tate, you know, obviously, right. yes. great there, Kevin yes. Samuels. Yeah. Um, this type of content has infiltrated TikTok, you know, in large part to, to Andrew Tate, by the way, where a lot of guys are waking up to the point where they fucking had to ban Andrew, right? Um, because he was just spend too many facts to the people. And mainstream media, right? BuzzFeed did a whole article on toxic uh, content creators, you know, and they they put pictures of us, Kevin Samuels, Andrew Tate in there. I would say the sphere has finally hit the mainstream, right? Mm-hmm. And you've been in this space for a very, very long time. Long time. And, you know, we've kind of been able to operate with anonymity for the better part of two decades. And, you know, it's kind of been an underground thing that people didn't know about, but it's, it, we're out there, right? Mm-hmm. And news are, news media outlets are, are here, you know, taking our content, clipping our content, calling us assholes, toxic misogynists, whatever it may be. What's your thoughts on all that, the, the, the attention that the, we've been getting? Um, it's, it's good because this is true. It is the obsolescence of the mainstream media. Understand the media was supposed to report on what is real, help out society, inform the public, right? Uh, The mainstream media has now been co-opted, part politics, part profit, but they absolutely do not care about the truth. And what I love watching, I have paid attention to this in the news, what I love watching the mainstream media is they're like the British before they get their asses kicked in some movie. Oh, (laughs) those rebels doing their thing? My goodness, those foolish boys with the misogynist ways. Let's get some more tea. And they don't realize that they're trying to maintain a narrative of feminism, socialism, whatever, popularity. Mm -hmm. 
And I would say the red pill community not being the only form of alternative media, but there's one thing. This is where the rebels send the X-Wing fighters and get the, the exhaust port at the Death Star. We have reality and human uh, genetics on our side, specifically the male sex drive. They have yeah. been ignoring men's desires and male reality and male genetics and male sexuality for so long that I love it when they say, look at these men demanding women with tight asses and big boobs and a nice, have you know, let me point out, let me show you how far off the mainstream media is. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> what if you say to a woman, well, you have kids, huh? Well, maybe you ought to raise them. Not, not in a condescending way, but, oh, I don't have the time. Da, da, da. Well, maybe you ought to raise your kids. That is misogynistic mm -hmm. for you to raise your children. Yeah. Hmm. No, we're right. And that's where they're going to be wrong. They're going to get caught with the pants down. And that's where the, the torpedo is going to go into the exhaust port and blow up the Death Star. Because the reason the red pill community, minister, whatever else you want to call it, has grown so much is the same reason that has grown all economies in the world. And that is the male sex drive. Men want to get laid. They will find any way to do it. And now, it, it, this is why it blew up, because it's coincided with the Internet. Now the mainstream media and their parents and teachers, you don't have a monopoly on information anymore. Now there is an it's alternative true. message. Out media. Men are finding out, guess what? What we says may not work, but it explains it. And if you do actually the work, well, what we say, it does work. And so while what Rachel Maddow or some washed up dried hooch thing on the TV, I can't believe, you know, Dan Rather, who, who watches 60? Oh, uh, Pierce Morgan. Yeah, yeah I was, I was just going to mention him with that interview. People that are like, oh, my God, did you see what did to Andrew Tate? I'm like, so what? Andrew Tate is less popular with the 50 to 58 to 70 year old pissed off spinster women. Hmm. That's not the audience we're fighting for that. That that did nothing. You know, that's main. That's that different. interview. Actually, th that interview is like almost a perfect personification of what's going on right now between like this type of content mm -hmm. versus the mainstream media. Pierce Morgan made himself look like an ass clown in front of Andrew Tate by making false accusations, mm -hmm. not understanding the message, putting things in his mouth, cutting him off, not letting him answer, and trying to put things in a certain context without, uh, you know, and, and try to vilify him. And the great, the crazy thing is, watch the video, look at the comments. The comments tell you all the truth, man. Right. Yeah. And and you and that right there, symbol, you know, pretty much sums up the mainstream media. This is why CNN has been losing ratings for years. Right. So why even Fox News has been taking L's. Mainstream media nowadays is struggling to keep an audience. What are they watching? They're watching alternative media. They're watching guys like Tim Cast now. They're mm. watching guys like Steven Crowder. They're yeah. watching guys that are not um, politically – how do I say this? They're not – how do I say this? Incentivized, right, to go off of the mainstream narrative to get social points. Mm. They're willing to go ahead and go against the grain and say things that might not be popular, mm. that might hurt people's feelings. And that's what people really want. And, you know, there's a reason why Trump won uh, the office – uh, a couple years back is because there is a solid majority of people that are tired of the fucking bullshit. The people that want to be like Pierce Morgan that are going to sit there and try to, you know, vilify someone and then making themselves look stupid in the process. Because at the end of the day, the, the you know, the, this type of content, this kind whether it's, you know, the, the, um, the RP knowledge when it comes to dating women, when it comes to the, uh, the truth, when it comes to biology between men and women, mm -hmm. right? Like the guy who, uh, um, what is a woman? What who doing that documentary? What's his name? Uh, Matt Walsh. Tim Walsh. Matt, Matt, Matt Walsh, Walsh. Right. Matt Walsh, Guys yeah. like that. Like that type of content is exploding right now because the truth always prevails. Right. And that's what we are on our side. On this side is we have the truth on our side, which is why people are like, yo, I might not like it, but I gotta at least accept it because it's the truth. Versus these mainstream media narratives, they're trying to spin something else which isn't true. Mm -hmm. Doesn't coincide with reality. But but you know what's funny? Chris Morgan knows that. He knows cool, I'm not going to agree with this message, but I've put on my platform, I'm going to get views. Exactly. So he mm -hmm. wanted to press him exactly. to make it look good for him. But what happened was, people that know the truth Backfired. or want to know the truth, but like, hold on. He can't even talk about his opinions. He can't even share it. And now you're, you're pressing him like, bro, this is an attack. So off rip, he looked really badly. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's it, British too, isn't he? Yeah. What yeah. are the chances? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. This yeah, man well, here wants to stick things in other things. My God. Oh, you're just a yeah. disgusting man, sir. It's hilarious because we went with Andrew to London for that interview. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. so so we went from because we were kicking it with Andrew for a couple weeks there in, in Romania, mm. and then we flew uh from Romania to um to London with him. 
And he went to do that interview and do some other things. And, uh, you know, I kind of, in my back of mind, I was like, man, yeah, they're going to try to do some bullshit. I, I, I mean, whatever. I, but, he could do it, but there's no reason. No, it was good for him. It was good, was it good for him? I, okay. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think, I think it was a good interview because even though it was frustrating to watch and they tried to pin him in a corner or whatever, honestly, Pierce Morgan look, made himself look very stupid. And he's a perfect personification of where we are with mainstream media, trying to go ahead and appease the female audience, right. trying to be, you know, um, politically correct, trying to be that, that SJW and in the process making themselves look stupid because they're not arguing based off of fact. They're arguing off of feelings. And when you argue off of feelings, well, you're almost always going to take an L to a degree because feelings don't necessarily coincide with reality. But it's funny. They want to skimper, skimper onto our side, get the viewership and get like the, the momentum oh, yeah. yes. and yes. then go back to their side. Yes. And it's funny, funny because that interview he did with Andrew is one of, I think, one of his top videos actually yes. right now. Mm -hmm. yes. So it just goes to show they want to come into our space and capitalize off of it because they know it's the truth. And I could go out to the safe place and say, you know what? Oh, they're bad people, but we'll, we'll entertain you for a little bit. Yeah, it's crazy. Bro. Yeah, there's a lot of grifters coming into crazy. Um, into the RP space right now, realizing like, holy shit, these guys are captiva captivating an entire audience. Because I I've said it before, and I'll say it again: we're not saying anything revolutionary. Yeah, all we're simply doing is waking men up. We're simply the alarm clock, letting them know it's fucking seven a.m. and it's time to go to school, motherfuckers. Yeah, that's all we're doing is waking them up. Like they've already had these these traits in them. Most guys don't want their girl going to a nightclub with a bunch of dudes there. Most guys don't like hoes. Most guys don't want their girl dressing like a slut walking around the streets when they have a boyfriend at home. Most guys don't like girls that are loud, obnoxious, that act like dudes. They don't like this shit. All we're doing is letting them know it's okay to feel this way. Yeah. It's okay to want to make money. It's okay to want to drive fast cars. It's okay to want to have multiple girls and uh, you know enjoy the fruits of your labor. It's okay. You don't have to be ashamed to be a fucking man. That's all we're doing. And guys are like, wait. I've been feeling this all along. You're telling me I can act this way? I don't have to sit here and supplicate to women and be a fucking pussy? What? This is amazing. So all we're doing is just awakening these motherfuckers of what was already inside them. But mainstream media doesn't like that because guys like us are bad for the economy. When a guy finally realizes his value, what does he do? He doesn't spend it on bitches. He doesn't spend it on... Um, you know, courting women that don't respect them or don't like him. He doesn't spend it, uh, you know, simping on chicks and all this other stupid shit. They focus on themselves and they give women what they deserve, which when you give women what they deserve, what do I tell you, niggas? Women deserve less, but coming soon. And the reality, <laughs> right? They, 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 uh, most women deserve less. And girls don't like this because it does what? It gives men finally the, adma the advantage when yeah. it comes to the dating marketplace and the sexual marketplace in general. And women don't like to have a disadvantage. So what do they do? They label it misogynistic. They label it toxic. They call it insecurity. They call it all these fucking buzzwords that they don't even know the definition of sometimes, by the way. Can't tell you how many times a girl called me a misogynist, can't even define it. Yeah. They say these buzzwords because it sounds cool and no one's going to check them on it. Well, until they come on the Fresh Fit podcast. <laughs> so we're waking guys up. We're not doing anything special. They've already had these feelings. They've already had these urges. They've already had that repulsion for sluts and everything. We're just waking them up and letting them know, don't tolerate this shit. No matter what society tells you, go and find a girl that's worth wifing up. Don't wife any girl that comes your way. Even in dating, the biggest wealth transfer, transfer is when you get married. Yeah. You divorce somebody, basically get half of your stuff. And as a man, if you know your power, you know what you're, what you're about, you're not, not going to fall into that trap because you're going to put yourself first. However, we're taught from the media, movies and Disney fairy tales, oh, give her the world without any type of like uh, reciprocation or any type of value, just give her the world and give her the best life possible. But it's like, hold on a second, Stupid. is she worth it? Is she a hoe? Is she cheating on you? That's important. So my thing is like, you wanna have a family and kids, this, this is important because you need to know the knowledge behind, is she a good girl, is she worth it? And then in the day, bro, you choose the wrong girl, your life is over. And, and honestly, this is why I love um, Aaron's books because mm -hmm. we're telling you guys, Wake up and smell the fucking coffee. This is the sexual marketplace. This is what women really think. Oh, y'all don't believe me? Read his books. Read the book of numbers. Yeah. Read, um, you know, Bash Pad Economics. Read all these books and realize, holy shit, what's the actual return on investment from courting and dealing with the modern day woman? And I'll tell y'all right now, I don't want to give a spoiler alert, <laughs> but it's pretty goddamn fucking slim. When he actually crunches the numbers, you went as deep as uh, comparing dating apps, right? Yeah. As well as uh, uh, looking at dating apps and like what women look for in men and dating apps. You want, oh, yeah. You, uh, you, yeah. yeah. Their, their decision, it, no trees. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like what women actually like select for, what they look for, all these things. <laughs> and um, you looked at, you you objectively looked at the dating marketplace and you looked at it like, yo, holy shit, only a minority men can actually succeed in this. And even then they still have slim picking. So it's like, I'm not telling y'all to go make time. I'm not telling you guys to hate women. I'm not telling you guys to just go ahead and just, just be by yourself all the time. All I'm saying is that know the numbers and go and educate it. I'd rather you know what the hell is going on and then move in there with that knowledge versus going in there with the wool over your eyes thinking like, yo, I'm just gonna get the special girl, whatever it may be. 
because I think a lot of guys operate from a position of uh, lack of knowledge. And when you operate from a position of lack of knowledge, women will use that to exploit you. I tell you guys all the time, a woman's greatest power is your um, your unawareness of female nature and her ability to exploit your unawareness of said female nature, aka being a blue pill simp. Her exploiting your inability to understand her and her real motivations, which with these books, this type of content, we tell y'all, man, we know women better than they know the fucking selves. You got to watch this kind of content. You're going to understand female nature, and then you'll be able to move accordingly in the new modern dating marketplace. Well, here's one thing. I mean, to get back to the original um, uh, super chatter <clears throat> yes. about the media. Yes. I, uh, as I've gotten older and try to think about things a little more clearly, we have to be incredible. I'm being serious. We have to be incredibly thankful for the mainstream media, for the 60 minutes, for the boomer media, for feminism, for teachers, for marketers and advertisers pushing single mom. You know why? What would we be doing if we told men the truth? If we told people the truth, I, I've made this point about Roosh. Roosh would have never been kind of the quasi household name that it is right now. Roosh would have been a lab, a lab assistant. Mm. And working in a virus, I would have been a credit analyst, maybe a VP of finance or something like that. You uh, 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 doing federal, uh, shit. federal stuff. You'd be a computer programmer. Nothing wrong with these professions at all. But I am eternally thankful for all the lies, the ignoring of what men want and need and would prefer. I appreciate the narrative. I appreciate the media. I appreciate feminists. I appreciate teachers. I appreciate single moms. I appreciate the welfare state. <laughs> I'm, I'm being deadly serious because, okay, I got to pay more in taxes, but I would never have had the income or this phenomenal opportunity we could have as our lives. This is like our job, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is our cool. freaking job, man. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is, and and it's cool because we got the internet now and there's no way, and this is why I'd rather have the male sex drive and reality on my side than the media and uh, whatever affiliated uh, uh, institutions in the United States. They got to keep up this lie to whatever, make money, get girls to spend $200,000 on a worthless degree for everyone to be miserable. That's fine because if you guys ever actually told the truth, me, Fresh Fit, Rolo, all these other guys would have to get real jobs. And so I think, That's but it, and I think this will go down, maybe not, won't make the history books, but there will be a footnote in the history saying, yeah, there was this movement uh, where there was an alternative. Could you believe, I mean, look at, you know, like Rome collapses. Well, they had bread and circuses all the time. Well, they didn't think that that was why they were collapsing. They're going to have some archaeologists <clears throat> find the new um, Amber Crombie and Fitch advertisers say, do you see how fat the they actually try to convince men that fat women were beautiful and they were <laughs> bad if they didn't want to sleep with fat women. Yeah. So I, I want the media. I want Piers Morgan. I want the feminists. I want academia. I want the government. I want you to keep lying to people <laughs> because we'll be here to provide a counter uh, well, not a counter to provide them the truth and the reality, and we'll make a living off of it. But we're also going to at least save these guys the the mental frustration that comes with following this but essentially lies and providing them an empirical reality. Something very interesting. Uh, when we landed in Romania, I remember we were at the airport and there was this ad and it showed a woman on it. And we, lo and behold, it was a woman like from the 1950s, thin mm. in shape. Yeah. Right. Not not fat, not too skinny. Um, and. I only saw in our time in Romania, we were there for what, two, three weeks? Yeah. I only saw one fat girl and mm -hmm. we had to actually go look for her. It was tough, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, she was and, 40s, and Justin, probably. yeah, we lost the bet. Justin was like, yo, find one fat girl in Romania, go. And we were like, yeah, it's going to be easy. <laughs> and we didn't see any, bro. We didn't see any. It wasn't yeah. until we were in the mall and actually like actively looking for one that we saw, I think, one or two fat women the whole time we were there mm -hmm. versus the United States, even somewhere here like Miami, you'll start to see a fat girl immediately. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, bro. Uh, how come um, to South Dakota? Do you oh, want yeah. fat women? Oh, yeah. oh, we got fat women. Let me show you. You guys come out. <laughs> South Dakota. Oh, God. <laughs> but I think it's good to have contrast yeah. because. We need the guys that are like, blue pill imps. We need the people that are like lie because without that type of like contrast to what we what we say, there's no point of having this, this discussion. And I think it's important because in this world, we need people to work for us. You're never going to red pill the masses yeah, anyway. Yeah. We're, no. we're only going to hit a very small percentage of the of the market, and that's fine because if I can save one guy from hurting himself, that's enough for me, bro. Like I, I you know, it, not everyone's going to wake up. A lot of guys are going to want to stand the delusion. Two yes, th gonna... two things: we're never Please. running out of work. Yeah, there are no. trillions of dollars yeah. and Facts. hundreds of billions of hours invested in raising kids to not believe in the truth of reality. So I'm not worried about 
um, oh my God, we figured it out. It's it's not going to happen on our lifetimes. But Terrence, they're going to cancel you if you make enough of it. Right. Impact. Look at Andrew Tate. They canceled him because the big reason why they canceled him was because he got to the kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa, he was indoctrinated high school kids. They're running around saying, what color is your Bugatti? And then they canceled him for that. But mm-hmm. that goes to show the fear of his influence. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't influence people like that unless you're telling the truth and it resonates with them. Because yeah. like I said before, all he's doing is putting the alarm clock on and waking up and nat- get arousing the natural tendencies you already had. But it's the influence that they were scared of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. And then, well, I was going to say so the good. second thing, just some good yeah, news. Uh, Pop saved his 482nd life. He wanted to say hi to you guys. Oh, shout out to Terrence. Yep. Yeah. 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 Terrence Pop. Yes, yeah. Terrence Pop. Yep. Yeah. Guys, go watch that interview. Very powerful interview that yeah. we did with Terrence Pop where we talked about divorce, um, divorce being how to navigate in, divorce. Yeah. Being in the military. Being in the military. Surviving that, coming back to reality. Dealing with suicide. Like, if you guys are going through a hard time right now with a woman, Watch that podcast with Terrence yeah. Pop. I'm really mad that that show didn't get more views. But, of course, when you talk about serious topics, um, life or death situations, uh, guys becoming better, people yeah. don't want to watch that. You guys want to watch us argue Girls. with a bunch of hoes, which, you know, this podcast is way bigger than that. But I I, I am under, uh, I, I understand reality that people prefer ed- entertainment over education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so shout you, out to Terrence Pop. Go you, subscribe to his YouTube channel, guys. But you, you know what I really like on YouTube? People want to be entertained. They don't want, really want to hear Facts. the truth for the most part. Facts. And as a result, look at the biggest creators. Entertain kids, toys, like dumb content that's not relevant. I'm like, how is this even funny? But people want to see that shit. So I'm still shocked that some of the people that make it on like that that are that are huge content creators on, on Twitch, YouTube, etc., that get all these millions and millions upon millions of views. And I'm like, how? Dude, I but, wish when I was a kid, I saw the the RP space or like you know, videos about self improvement because I'll be way further ahead. Because yeah. actually you can watch this content, learn from it, and apply it right away versus I watch a funny video <laughs> as a quick laugh, but then I'm still stuck in square one. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, still L. Yeah. Do you have something, Aaron, you were going to say? No. No. Oh, okay. just, I, I, I guess uh, the, another guy says hi. Uh, Kevin Savo. Uh, have you noticed how ripped he got? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm just saying. Reasons, well, no, no. I just want to like, he, well. he put a lot because he finally admitted he's coming out as gay. And he wanted to have that <laughs> gay bodybuilder so he could go dance at the at the drag shows. <laughs> So okay, that's why. I hope, hope you're trolling there. <laughs> yeah, no, he's trolling. Yeah, yeah, but, trolling. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, okay, uh, where where are we at? Uh, okay, uh, men are just uh, sperm donors and walls for three hundred four. Yeah, uh, one love to the merch squad, ACP, the Discord gang, Big Mo and FNF Mafia. I got my plane tickets. Go to the Millie party, baby. Can't wait to celebrate. Cool, nice. Arturo Mendoza, t- a dollar. Awesome shirt, Claire. He's yes. the one that gave me the shirt. That's why. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once Giselle got Tom sperm, he became useless. Fair point. Damn. Uh, and actually, yo, uh, Rose is going to be here next month, guys. We're going to do a whole podcast on divorce and um, the rates at which women divorce and the stimuli for why they divorce. And you guys are going to get some interesting data as far as like women try divorcing a guy at certain ages and why they do it. And uh, actually, Rolo was very close to see. Um, Robert Kiyosaki's like set up so that's yeah. telling in itself yeah so we're gonna do a whole episode on divorce and and we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of it when he comes uh, to town uh, next month um, and then we might be in Vegas this week as well guys I'm still sending some things up but once I confirm I'll let you guys know what we're gonna be doing over there uh, hope they like cats and that's from Rep and Time Fitness thank you and then we got Rolo Tomasi in here speaking of the devil goes Kim Kiyosaki literally said I don't need you anymore to Robert Kiyosaki before they split and she was right her future security is guaranteed there you go my Damn. friends Choice and options is a lubricant of divorce. I issue a challenge to you, gentlemen. I challenge both of you to wrangle at the one mill party. May the best man win. Yo, oh, man. You know what's funny? I was getting hit up about the party, right? And I was like, yeah, you could pull, you could pull up. Then thought about it. Hold on a second. I'm cool with her. I'm cool with her. Cool with her. Translation, I had sex with her. <laughs> if they're all in the same room... That's going to be crazy. Yeah. Because it's like, who do you spend time with? <laughs> you have to do a Tristan Tate wrangle. Like, oh, shit. But... Uh, yeah, Tristan don't give a fuck though. But what, what do you be like twenty of them? Hold in on, there. what are you gonna do? What am I gonna? Don't worry about me, man. Uh, <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> Giselle, <laughs> don't worry about me. <laughs> allegedly, mine. Allegedly. TBX, allegedly. Thank you, Mo. Uh, Giselle, go. Oh no, sorry. Uh, Giselle going to wake up when Tom Brady starts dating a new twenty-year-old model. Yeah, that's when reality hits women sometimes when they're actually replaced. Shout out to the Rashamel himself and Discord. Yep. And yeah, trust me, bro. It, like the fact that she even has the audacity to break up with someone like Tom Brady, thing that she could replace him. 
The only people that are going to be in there giving her a chance are stupid idiots that, quite frankly, aren't at the peak of their value. Well, Michael Mistro, you, you know what they say? You don't miss it until until it's gone. Facts. Yeah. Uh, guys, let's do McDonald's and order the McObese McCholesterol and the McDivorce and finish it with the Mc hit the wall. Uh, thank you, uh, Decipher the Unseen. Uh, Mogo, tips for people that are going through breakup: stay in gyms, uh, stay in the gym, keep your frame, make money, and find a woman that's worthy of the relationship and, uh, and wished past the wall, the past well. Um, Shelter your guests, FNF. Yep. Uh, Myron, can we get a crypto portfolio update? Um, I'm heavy in Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, guys. Those are really the only main two coins that I invest in. Michael Trusty and Dollar, thank you. Marriage cause divorce. MGTOW, men guarding their own wallets. Uh, that's a way to put it as well. <laughs> Shout out to the MGTOW community. Like I said before, guys, I don't have an issue with the MGTOW community. If you guys want to you know, say, you know, fuck women and I don't want to deal with women, that's one thing. My thing is I just want you guys to understand females before you make that decision. And if you do want to go ahead and deal with girls, watch our pod and we'll give you guys the reality. I want guys um, to put, put, put themselves first, yeah. but at the same time, make a choice at that point. Yeah. Do I, I wanna... don't want you to be sent your way. We want yeah. you guys to actually go your way. Go Let's your be way. honest. A lot of yeah. y'all get sent your way. Yeah. We want you guys to actually Facts. be able to go your way. You That's put, the difference. If you put yourself first and you understand your value, you can decide to do whatever you want. But make sure it's your choice only. Yeah, not the not the girls. Yeah. Uh, hope is a strategy for the uninformed L uh, uninformed losers. Cool. Well, I I will say hope has a place of action. So for example, hopeful hope plus action equals results. So if you don't believe in yourself, have faith in yourself, how can you take action? You need to have I some, some type of hope. Uh, Dingo Tech. The more I think and see what the world uh, and see what world the world, the more I feel like I, I'm sinking into an endless abyss. I'm glad I was able to find this side of the internet because it became a beacon in the abyss. Yeah, man, we yeah. got y'all, bro. Yeah. It, sometimes just understanding things may, brings everything to clarity, so you guys know what you got to do. Michael Trusty, one dollar, thanks. Uh, Asefa goes. What's Aaron's book called again? He has several. He Many has, books. Yeah, the, yeah. The main one for this topic would be the Book of Numbers, analyzing yeah. the ROI, of the pursuit of women. That'd be the one you should pick on. Uh, I dabble in the dark and also pick up Bachelor Pad Economics. Really good book mm-hmm. uh, as far as, uh, you know, getting your financial stuff in order. I dabble in the dark. Myron's alter ego. Thank you. Uh, and then what else do we got here, Mo? I'm going to read 20 enough from this point forward. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Can you guys talk about pornography? And Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, pornography. Yes. Can you, can you, this one's a good one. Can you talk about pornography and its effect on the man's uh, life? I have, And this is from uh, Eon P- Pioroma. Is uh, just Mo, just leave it. Is that something uh, you've had to overcome? I've been struggling with it for years and it changes the way I feel about my girlfriend. Yeah, bro. Uh, pornography is something that you typically want to stay away from. And the reason why is because it inhibits your ability to be creative. Um, I mean, it has its time and place. But if, but if you rely on it totally, it's going to destroy you. Yeah, facts. Yeah. So, so some guys have debilitating addictions to porn, which is wild, bro. You got you to gotta just cut it off. Uh, Mike James, 100 bucks. Thank you. Enjoy the memberships. I appreciate that, my friend. And then DL Sam really want to know podcast. Uh, just showing love. Pause. Shout out to Aaron, Big Mo, Chris, Myron, and Fresh. Keep leaning from the French gentleman. Thank you, uh, DL Sam. Guys, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I really want to know podcast. Shout out to Steven Crowder. Cleared the path for us. Yeah, I, I like uh, Steven Crowder, man. Uh, he gets a lot of heat. A lot of people hate him. YouTube is on his ass. But, uh, you know, I think he has very practical and realistic views on, you know, the way the world works. He talks about a lot of RP stuff, even though he's not necessarily an RP content creator. But I agree with a lot of the things he says. Uh, great to see Cappy in Miami. Wondering if he has read Ray Dalio, Dalio's recent book on the decline of nations. If so, what's his opinion? I have not read it. So, not. yep. Okay. Um, speaking of which. Yeah, speaking of which. Um, <laughs> so transitioning over, right? I guess we could get it. Was there anything else that we need to hit with the intersexual dynamics? I'm trying to think here. No, I think we covered most everything. <laughs> I think now the current state of yeah. the marketplace. Yeah, so dating? let's talk about Sorry, uh, uh, so let's finance. talk about money real quick. Uh, um, can you give the people a real quick background on your financial background, and then we can get into bachelor of science finance. Work at banking for fifteen years. Did early on like basic investing courses, like four hundred one k IRA type of stuff, and um, then wrote some books. Can you tell me in. the importance of finance? For a guy's life, like how important it is, because it, I feel like it, people un- undermine it. it. It's here. Here's how it is. You know how I say, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have your finances, you don't have anything either. Mm. Um, your money is, uh, it's time. It's your time, <clears throat> and you need your time deployed in a certain way. So not only can you survive and get more time through food, clothing, and shelter, and supporting yourself, you would ideally like to have a surplus of time through skilled labor so you could go and enjoy life before you do what guys die die Die. right so that and so finances are just as important as your health i would say that those are the two things you'd be focusing on and frankly i don't think you should be pursuing girls all that seriously if you don't have those two things together Mm. and i think uh the other thing too that guys need to understand which is like an unfortunate reality is that 
Only women get the privilege of being broke. You don't, my friend. Yeah. Okay. Um, a woman can go ahead and use her beauty and her youth to her advantage and find a rich guy. You, no matter how handsome you are, you are never going to get a rich woman to take you yes. seriously. It's called women, infants, and children. There is no male equivalent. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, I think guys really uh, – and I and it shocks me how so many guys just are okay with being broke, being poor, being mediocre, and they think, oh, well, you know, I, I think I could – well, a lot of guys understand they can't get a bad bitch if they're broke. But at the same time, it, they think being mediocre is all right. And, guys, it is not all right. Not for the women, but because it limits your ability to have choices in life, which then will go ahead and degrade the quality of said life. Hmm. I just find it weird. Sometimes guys would be like, oh, she's a gold digger. But she wants a man that has money and resources to take care of her. If you're broke, nigga, what is she going to get from you? <laughs> other than she, sex? You ain't got no gold to dig. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my thing is, like, at least on some level, get yourself together finances together as well that way you have a fighting chance so you know what cool i can dictate who i want my life and, and another cold hard reality you guys have watched the show before you guys have seen i asked the girls what do you you know typically how do you how much do you want a guy to make it's always either what they make or preferably if not more what 52 percent more than they do on average uh 58 percent 58 percent more they want almost 60 percent more than what the average single guy in america makes damn yeah. So, and that translates now. This is a year ago, so there's inflation, but that was 65 grand. So if you need a ballpark number to go by, let's just call it 70. You need to be making 70 grand or more to meet that average. Bare minimum. At, at least. Yep. Bare minimum, at least. guys. So, um, and a lot of girls are higher than that, especially the more attractive they are, they're going to command more. So knowing that, guys, that that's just that's just what it is, right? Like just to even be able to play the game a lot of the times. We talked about this with Andrew Tate. There's certain girls that to, to play the game in itself, you need yeah. to be a multimillionaire. You don't even get a chance to even talk to them. And that's the women get that privilege because they, there's no burner performance on women when it comes to creating resources. And the, the other thing, too, just so you guys understand, it is so strongly hardwired in women to get their needs met by a man is that even if you meet a girl and she makes a million dollars a year, let's say she makes a flat, easy number of a million dollars a year and her security is provision for her, she's good. She don't need a man's money, whatever. She's still going to want you to be at least making a million if not more than her that goes to show the deep ingrained need for security that women have if you make a million dollars and you meet a girl that works at fucking mcdonald's you don't care because you know you got her women don't operate that way if they make a million they want you to still be able to provide that security should something happen to them and that's rooted in them guys so knowing that there is no acceptance of mediocrity and for all you bum guys that do get girls right oh, i get girls when i was broke that's true but it's not going to last the time clock is there you're not going to be able to maintain them long term and also are you going to say when you get to 50 years old, oh, I got bitches. Okay. Congrats, <laughs> brother. I think we all did at some point. But guess what? Your, your, maybe your grandkids, maybe your family. How are you going to support them? So my thing is, bro, you can get girls now when you're broke, but you should be working on your finances. Yeah. So what, what is the first step you would say, um, Aaron, for guys to building that that portfolio, whether it's a working man or entrepreneur, or whatever it may be? Because, yeah. uh, I mean, let's be honest here. The retire Social Security is down the drain. Right. Yeah, retirement yeah. nowadays is almost like a farce, right? The, yeah. the, the, the infl inflation's eating away at that. So the strategy that our parents employed, just get a job, go to college. Well, go to college, get a job. You'll be able to buy a home. You'll be able to afford, you know, raising a family on a single income, et cetera. That's all out the window mm -hmm. nowadays. So how do people need to adapt for the modern day? Here, Here's, well, this, this goes for any day. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> this is the number one thing, because let's just admit like, uh, I think Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, we all know what to do. Mm -hmm. Just when we turn, know what to do with dieting and exercise, we all know what to do. What everybody or every guy <clears throat> and women, if they care to participate, what everyone needs to do is realize you need to get by on less. Mm. You need to get rid Boy. of materialism. That's very hard in part because of biology and genetics because, you know, it's the same thing as a dog. I've used this analogy before. You give a dog a bowl of food, what will the dog do? eat until it throws up. Yeah. There's the, and it, humans have that same thing because we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. So you gorge yourself now. It's the same thing with materialism. So <clears throat> you have this genetic compunction to spend. And then also without a doubt, starting when you are a toddler, they are advertising to you and installing a, uh, not only a, a materialist or consumer mentality, but also a, a debt slave mentality. Mm. What do you do first thing when you become an adult? You go into debt for a joke of a degree. It's not even a degree. It's an experience. You're going to a, to a stupid party to act like you're intelligent when you're not. That's called college for about 80% of the people out there. <laughs> then when you graduate from college, and this is where I have a huge complaint with the boys. <clears throat> What's the number one thing they do? Credit card? No. Car. That even happens in in college you can do that at 18 usually what a well how does a, a young man reward himself from graduating with his piss crap degree from he, he buys a car buys a car on credit yeah mm. and 
then you get a McMansion and then you get, in other words, the middle school never ends, but instead of fancy shoes or fancy shirt, now we're talking fancy cars and fancy degrees and masters and more of a lifestyle, which then not only are you a consumer or a materialist, you are now a debt slave because the things you buy require debt. <clears throat> and after that, you're a slave. And unless you sell your house or liquidate your assets, you're stuck there forever. Don't even get me started if you're married and, and you now face the risk of divorce. <laughs> but in getting, like, I, I, I have no problem admitting this. I have a 2003 Chevy Silverado. I paid 4,000 bucks for it. I just did the work on it not too long ago, changing spark plugs myself. Most of my clothes I get at Goodwill. Um, I, the so furniture, unless the shirt, except the shirt, right? Except, yeah, but this is a gift. I didn't pay for this. Yeah. yeah, yeah just yeah. like this one might, might disappear. You never know. Keep me warm in winter. Jeff, are you sure about Goodwill? Yeah, absolutely. I thought I'd give it to you for free. No, no, I don't have that good of a reputation at Goodwill. They don't like me that much. Um, but it's because I don't want the stuff. What I want is my life. I want my time. And whereas not everyone can go become Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or, you know, even a, an investment banker or a surgeon, you know what you all can do? You can all get by on less and you can work. I did it. I, I, I worked now. Yes, there were tough times. <clears throat> yes, I couldn't afford everything I liked, but I was able to work as a security guard and survive just fine. Right? Now, of course, I added did other things. I didn't just be happy with that. You but had you, side hustles as well. Doing I that. had side hustles as well. You were writing but, a book at the time, weren't you? Um, well, I, I worked security on and off since I was like 18. So, yeah. I mean, I ended up doing armed security and stuff for a buddy of mine, but that, that's, that wasn't back in the poor days. Um, my point is that, look, you can have all this stuff. And this is where you're, you're really good on this, Walter, where you did the, the Lamborghinis, you tried it, and guess what? Now you're bored with it and it's done. Yeah. And now it's like, do you want a Lamborghini or do you want freedom? Freedom. And once you realize that you don't need the fancy clothes, you don't need the fancy car, you don't need the McMansion, you don't need the master's degree, you would you need less money overall. And when you need less money overall, that is the quickest way to financial freedom rather than making more. Mm. And so it's kind of like a fuel efficiency. Like I got to travel a hundred miles. Well, a moped will make it on a gallon of gas. Or do you want to go get some ridiculously, Hummer. you know, uh, <clears throat> no, nah, let's do South Dakota, a dually. You guys know what a dually is? What is that? Yeah. A dually is where they got two real wheels on, on each oh, side. They okay, got four okay. real. Yeah, you get a dually and it gets 10 miles a gallon. That's going to be, that's 10 times the effort. Yeah. And what you're going to find out is all this crap you buy, it, it just ends up in a landfill. It just ends up in a landfill and all it did was enslave you the entire time. And so people are like, oh, it must be lucky to be you. It's like, no, it's not luck. And it, it actually isn't even hard work. It's just not choices. buying the it's choices. It's not yeah. buying the dumb crap. Mm -hmm. It's I'll go make myself a sandwich at home instead of going to the restaurant. I'll go do this thing uh, at, at I'll, I'll do my own spark plugs. Yeah. Then pay a mechanic two hundred dollars to do it because it's underneath the heat shields. The engine is a little bit different. That's it. And I, I, I cannot, it's, it's a simple choice. <clears throat> do you want to be free or do you want to have shit? Yeah. Which do you want? And it's, you think it's a simple choice, but it's not because everyone is not only genetically hardwired to consume more, they are conditioned by society to consume more for, to impress other people, essentially Very to true. show status. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that 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 is the number one thing that I thought I could convey because it, Dave Ramsey isn't wrong. All the retirement planning financial books aren't wrong. Bachelor Pad Economics is wrong. Yeah, contribute to your 401k, have the power of exponential math, do that. This is, you know, invest in the index. The professionals don't know what the hell they're doing. Don't major in dumb shit. We could go on with everything you have to do. But if you are index a, over mutual funds by right, far. Right. And yeah. if and if you are addicted to the spending and I got to have the status and the prestige and I go to go to the party. Da, da, it's like, okay, well then you're never going to stop spending money. And you'll have never have the money. You could have the full intention and know I got to throw in this amount of month every day, but you're living paycheck. You know, what was there? Was, there was a study or article came out like a third of people who make a quarter million a year live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. That's wild. No savings. 
like what what in the man you gave if you gave me that when i was a young man i'd be, I'd be like somewhere else not yeah, here yeah. but um it's a choice but it, it is a it's it's one of psychology and biological programming that yeah. i found but if there, if you can get to that point Everything else is cake. Everything else falls into place. But that that is the bigger sort of that's why I think most of the focus should be in terms of Spending helping less. people with finance. Right. Is is getting over that that addiction is, is more I less. think there's a uh, not an agenda, but more like a pressure for you to look a certain way, act a certain way, have that sort of like lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because, for example, rappers, right? Like I find it funny because actually meeting some of the rappers, they had the lifestyle, but it's all rented. It's not real. Mm-hmm. So you, you say, okay, cool. I want to be a rapper. You meet them. It's like, oh, that's not mine. That's rental. And I was like, hold on. It's like, you're flaunting it like it's yours. But like, you're saying from uh, outside in, you go by yourself. You're like, damn, no, you're in debt. They're not in debt, but they have to, like, like to look for it. My thing is like, at a certain level, I would say experience it, but don't go all the way in. Mm-hmm. So why did I did it smart? Like I told you at dinner, I got the cars, but how I did it is that I got the cars on the lease uh, portion and I can sell it. I made profit from it. So mm-hmm. I didn't really lose money getting the cars. But at the same time, most people, they go finance a car right away and then they lose hella money. I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and, and another thing, like, look, I have no problems with, like, rent a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Rent a, a big-time condo on the Strip in Vegas. Experience it. Yeah, go, go experience it. But yeah. rent, you know, same thing with it, the 3F rule. You guys know the 3F rule? Tell us. Floats, flies, or fornicates. Uh-huh. You rent it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And so, include women. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you wanna, if Tom Zodiac has famously yeah. said that, right? Yeah. Well, that's an old that that's a banking joke. Uh, okay. That's a banker joke. Flies, like, fucks, or floats, or, flies, or, or fucks. You rent it. Okay. Yeah. We don't finance anything. We don't finance anything. The, the three Fs. Fs. Yeah. <laughs> the three that's Fs. the, the there three Fs. Go, man. There's some game right there for you guys. Right. Finesse, but, finesse game. But mm-hmm. go rent it. Get the experience. And here's what I wish. I I don't think people get on that side of the of the glass see you you've you've peered behind the curtain you've been there you've lived that yeah i think people have to scratch that itch like you got all these virgins like oh my god sex 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 it's like will you just go get a prostitute already and experience it <laughs> yeah. so you don't waste your life worrying about it for the rest of it it's the same thing with wealth like okay you go live the party lifestyle you go do that. You get the Ferrari. You do whatever you want. Do it for even a year if you'd like. And then you realize, oh, it's. and I'll tell you this. You don't just, need it. You don't need it. But here's here's another thing. When you see other people with it, you're 100% correct. They are renting it. When yeah. I was in banking, there were only – this is 15-year career, guys. Thousands of spreadsheets, thousands of tax returns, thousands of personal financial statements. There were two real men who were legitimately wealthy. Mm-hmm. Every cocksucking middle-aged gray-haired schmutz that came into my office <laughs> asking for a loan pulled up in a Mercedes or a BMW or some fancy That's car. Telling. It was always rented. Right. There was a loan against it, and they find they had a two million dollar house. Wifey poo made them take out five mortgages on the damn place, and it was a hundred and twenty percent loan to value. Holy shit! The damn. majority. Of I can't even call it wealth, but the majority of wealth you see is borrowed. Yeah. It is not real wealth. They do not own those assets. Yeah. Same thing with people. Well, I have a PhD. Yeah, and three hundred thousand dollars in debt for your worthless joke of a degree. I'm a doctor. And the sooner you, everyone realizes, especially the younger men, because we're the ones that got to go and show our peacock feathers. Yeah. The you sooner you guys learn that, the sooner you're gonna not be envious. The sooner you're going to realize it's boring, it's not all that exciting because all these guys did was fret and ask for more money because their business ventures were going down. Mm-hmm. And you're the quiet guy making the money and you got your house paid off and you get a good night's rest. And then you can go travel the world or sit on a beach or do whatever you want. That is living. You cannot achieve that standard of living. And, 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 and these people who go and borrow the money and go into the debt trap, they'll never enjoy that. Like here, let me tell you how rich I am. And notice there's no discussion of money here. Yeah. <clears throat> My house, not that big. It's only 1400 square feet. All right. It's completely done. And when I say completely done, I mean, everything is caulked. All the landscaping is done. The yard is seeded and grass is growing. Retaining walls are put up. Um, and I have not a single scrap of clutter. I went through, I didn't have that much to begin with, but I went through my handful of boxes that I had. Mm. I put things into display books, those picture books. 
I organized my fossils on a display case. There is now officially not a single thing left for me to do in my house. I don't have projects. I don't have this, you know, people have projects go 10, 15, 20 years. Wife is nagging you to do that. It's done. And you know what I get to do now? <laughs> Whatever the fuck I want. Facts. And I get to go. And I have, I mean, I finally finished it. You know, the, the final thing was a walk-in closet. But all of a sudden, it's like, boom, there's now all this free time in the world. I've been hiking. I've been riding motorcycles. I've been uh, playing poker. I come visit you guys, you know. Do you want that life? Or do you want to be this fat guy with a gut who's driving a Mercedes, who's praying to God his wife doesn't find out that he has a house, a car, but she's too stupid to know the difference between debt and equity spending, and they got a house. That, think about what do you want? And the sooner you can unplug and deprogram yourself from that lie, essentially, of materialism, consumption, or lifestyle, mm -hmm. the sooner you can join me. The sooner you can have your house in order and the sooner you can sleep in till nine, have coffee in bed till 10 and do whatever the hell you want. But it, but I, I cannot undo the programming. I got, I've got some attempts and I have some uh, classes that I've developed, but I, it's ultimately going to be your choice, what kind of lifestyle you want. Yeah. And so once you figure that, once you get over that hurdle, the IRAs, 401ks, personal budgeting, that all is easy, but there is, there's no point. No point in anyone listening within ear of, uh, of my voice. If you cannot get your spending under control, don't even bother setting up a 401k mm. and expect to die piss poor. That's that's basically it. And I think that's important that, you know, people don't know is that, you know, it took you decades to get to that point where mm. now you are where you're you're chilling. But that came from, you know, decades of discipline and, right. you know, uh, you know, spending a lot less than you make. Mm. And. What are some steps that people should take besides spending less? Because, I mean, that's that's obviously very important. I think it needs to be echoed more because not enough people understand you need to spend less than you make. Mm -hmm. All debt, the root cause of debt and bad debt in that case, right? We're not talking real estate debt or in this other case. We're talking consumer debt for a lot of you guys that buy a bunch of bullshit, right, comes from spending more than you make. Mm -hmm. So let's say someone adopts – how much should they be spending, I guess? Percentage as little, of as li the answer is as little as possible. safely possible. Mm -hmm. And if you if you want a place to start – Grab a standard, you can look up personal uh, income statement or personal uh, budget. Yeah. yeah, Microsoft has one. I think there's one there's in Patrick. Yeah, yeah, stuff that's you online. You get Mint.com. Mint yeah. helps with that. You can look, it, it show your net worth. That might help some of you guys with, when you link all your accounts to see what your net worth is and you see it says negative something, that's <laughs> going to hurt. Well, you know what's that's scary? If you sit down, right, get a notepad and some pens. You do two columns. You do your debts and your income. And you write it all in a line, and you add that shit up. It's like holy shit. Yep. How much oh, are you spending shit. a month on debt alone? Credit card debt, car debt, uh, rent. It'll Bro, wake some of you guys up. It, it's you scary. need to see it. You need to see, right. yeah, you need to see it. And you that's why. I'm, and that's what I'm saying is get a template, whether it's Microsoft or anything online. They'll pretty be standardized. <clears throat> Go through the items, and it'll be pretty apparent what the main ones are. Rent is usually the number one thing, mm -hmm. or, or lodging or housing. Then a car. Then a car, yeah. especially for the boys out there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> depending on your age and who you are, it might be your student loans. Mm -hmm. uh, that, yep. that might be another one. Health care, if you one. don't have it through your, your employer. Um, and then it kind of, then it's more like personal stuff, um, like gas. Like, do you commute a lot? Do you drive a lot? Things like it, it come, now it, it, it depends on the individual. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. But yes, yeah, see, the devil's in the details on that miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. Are you going out to eat every day? Mm -hmm. That's that's where no, it adds up. That, that'll that add up. Do you have a vice like drinking or tobacco or True. something? Yep. Or drugs. Or, or drugs. So, right. Yeah. That's not going to show up any credit card. But, you know, you, <laughs> you, you, um, and but break it down. But the main ones. No, sweetheart, you don't need to live in downtown where all the action is. <laughs> that is your number one major expense. No, you don't. You just tell an employer, you know, one of the main reasons uh, rent is so expensive is because your employers unnecessarily require you to be downtown where their office is. And you just say, no, boomer, I'm not going to go downtown where the I'm going to take a different job. So you almost if you can work remotely, sometimes that's not possible. <clears throat> your car, your transportation. That uh, uh, both men and women. I, I don't know anyone who drives a worse car than me. I, I really don't. I got a worse car than me. Do you? 2002 Honda. Yeah, it would kill wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, boy. That is, yeah. That's yeah, pretty that's good. Worse. That's yeah. pretty good. For a while, time, the brakes didn't work. We almost died. <laughs> 
So uh, well, you should maintain them too, but I don't want to tell people how to live. It's, uh, <laughs> it's fixed now. It's fixed now. Thank God. Thank God it's fixed now. Uh, and then, yeah, so your car, your house. And here's another thing. I, I almost don't care about anyone over 25 because like, look, you've already made your dumb choices. Mm. Um, please, for the love of God, young people, don't go to school for something stupid. And if you do go to school for something good, you don't need to go to the flagship campus. Go online and good get point. your prereqs out of the way. Go to the local community college where it's a fraction of the cost. College, people think college is not affordable. It's like, no, going to a party college is not affordable. Yeah. Mm. Going, by the way, school. private school, the Ivy League is a joke now. There's just no darn reason to go to the Ivy League. Um, go to a local community college, get your prereqs out of the way major in engineering, major in accounting, whatever else have you. And you should be able to graduate with $20,000 in debt. I was brainwashed about community colleges thinking like you were stupid or it was bad. Looking back, like community college is actually a very a intelligent great way to get your prereqs out the way, not waste as much money, and then go ahead and do the last two years. Mm -hmm. You know, because guys, let's be honest here. College is just an acceptable way to spend four years of your life. You know what I mean? Uh, drinking, partying, and doing stupid shit and not really knowing what you're doing. So um, community college is actually a good thing. I used to think it was bad. Mm -hmm. I, I remember like growing up, like my parents indoctrinated me to think that community college is bad. That's terrible, blah, blah. But now looking back as an adult, it's actually a fantastic way yeah, it's, to it's cut great. corners with, with costs mm -hmm. when it comes to edu higher education. <clears throat> I would say more modernly for especially younger men and women um, in the olden times, this, we, we're going way back in my day, right? Uh, oh, God. Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone were Help there. Us. Yeah. Uh, there was shame living at home. Now with rent prices being as high as it is and women just having very little interest in men. I, I cannot fault men for staying at home because yeah. why the yeah. hell would you spend $1,500 a month rent? Go to school online. And here's another thing. I'm okay with that as long as they save and yeah. they're like and doing something productive. A lot of you guys live with your parents and don't do shit. Yeah. Right. Sorry, and that's exactly what I was going to say is there is absolutely nothing wrong where you take a gap year or two or three and you bust your ass off, drive an Uber, work in security, some other thing or another, you live at home, you save up money. Cause I got a lot of clients now like, Hey, I'm 19 or 20 and I feel like a loser. And he, now listen to this. These, they think they're losers and they say, well, I'm kind of a loser cause I live at home, but I have $70,000 saved up yeah. <laughs> and no debt. Yeah. And I'm they're like, but my friends are going to graduate from college next year. I'm like, do you hear yourself? Yeah. yeah. Do you, hear, you are $70,000 plus they're going to be $70,000 in the hole. If they're lucky, if they're lucky. <laughs> right. And, they, and, and with a, a joke of that's a one year university of Miami now. Is that, could you believe that? Well, dude, when I went to college, uh, private school, I, I, I'll never forget this. When I was looking at university of Miami, I was going to go there back in 2009 I think it was about thirty-three to forty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. guys. Tuition now, room and board, and everything is about seventy thousand dollars at the University of Miami. Yeah, college, and this was back what not a little over ten years ago, man. Mm -hmm. It is ridiculous how expensive college is nowadays, man. Co college is for the genuinely privileged and stupid class. Either you have your daddy's money to attend, or you are so stupid, you will sign the loans on that. There is no reason you should be going to a school that charges more than $10,000 a year. Absolutely not. Yeah. You can find that online, especially your prereqs. You can get those out of the way. Western Governors University, I always sing their praises. You can go ahead and get some prereqs out of the way. You don't have to leave your home to do it. There's no travel costs. There's no parking costs. Uh, and then you should really try to finish your two years. If, if you're getting a bachelor's degree, your two years. Otherwise, by God, the trades or more modernly, you could just show up to work. Employers are so desperate because they have a bunch of worthless, lazy children, adult children who will not work that you could. They got bartenders starting at twenty dollars an hour plus tips yeah uh they can't find wait staff at the restaurants pretty much every employer is more than happy to pay you a living wage and you might as well go COVID work has hurt the workforce a lot like a lot of people left the workforce and like yeah i don't want to go back fuck this shit yeah yeah and so and so and that's good for people who are willing to work but right now look you can Go and work for $20 an hour. Dude, just doing lawns. You can't find kids to do lawns anymore. And you could charge $20 an hour to do lawns. And keep this in mind. You graduate from high school. You make $20 an hour doing literally pretty much anything. Pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And then your peers, you'd be like, oh, I did this for four years. All I did was mow lawns for $20 an hour. You, the majority of your friends are going to graduate. 85% of them are going to graduate with a worthless degree. And guess what they're going to make? <laughs> they're going to make $20 an hour mowing lawns. But you got the 80 grand saved up uh, and four years where you'll be the foreman. You'll be in charge of them. And also, don't forget to add opportunity costs. 
Because oh, yeah. now you have experience working that job <clears throat> for maybe two, four years, and you have the money saved up, so now you have freedom. Mm-hmm. So imagine experience with freedom, you have a choice to make. Either I can stay at this job or get a new job in a di- different endeavor. Well, and, and think what a different orbit having 50, 60, maybe, may, if you stick around long enough, 100 grand. Like, let's say you just stayed at home until 23. Mm-hmm. Five years, you busted your ass off. You saved everything. All of a sudden, you got 100, 120 grand. You're in confidence. a different, you're in, well, no, no, not even confidence. Now you can do something that even the millennials can't. You can start looking at homes. Yeah. You can start putting a down payment, a serious down payment on a home. You could travel the world to figure out where you want to live. Mm-hmm. You could afford uh, whatever tech school or something like that. You you could probably go foreign, go overseas, start a business. If you want start a business. You don't even have to go to college at this point in mm-hmm. time now. So and- it, it's not as, it's not as dire as it is, but if you go to school at what, 30,000 a year. Yeah. <laughs> you're a fool. You're yeah, a freaking fool. Lucky. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, these private schools are going to be more like 50 to 70,000. You know, I, yeah. I found that amazing that the universe, university of Miami literally doubled from the last time I looked. Cause I was, talking to a girl that went to university of Miami's undergrad and she was like, yeah, it's like 75 K now. I was like, what the fuck? And I will, I will say this real quick too, just so you guys know, we're not sitting here telling y'all fuck college. Don't go to college, blah, blah, blah. What we are telling you is that most of you guys that go to college major in stupid shit. That's not going to land you a job. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go to school, you want to be a doctor. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be no, a not lawyer, not lawyer. Not no, a lawyer? no waste of time. Uh, it's not necessarily. If you got into do a tier one law school, fine. You better have an undergrad, like accounting. Mm, there you programming go. Okay. to fall back on because law school is so expensive and there are so many crap law schools out there. Mm. Um, no, that is, that is a huge risk. I knew in the olden days it was lawyers and doctors. No, it's just doctors. Now. Just doctors. Yeah, nowadays. please, please get the book worthless. The young person's indispensable guide Here to choosing the right major before you choose your degree. That's very important. Learn something mm. new every day. Yep. Wow. So yep. we're real quick. Uh, uh, so, um, so just so for any aspiring <clears throat> lawyers out there. So, what should they be shooting for? Let's say I, I want to be a, I, I want to be a lawyer. So I go to college with I get my undergrad and something that can land me a job immediately. Right. Right. Accounting, computer science. What else? Engineering. Engineering. And, 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 whatever you want. That can get the, you an entry level position. At Yes. You won't fall stuck. back. Right. Then. Right. Don't do political science. and all this other dumb shit that people typically right. do when they want to be lawyers. Then you go to law school and you're saying it's not even worth it unless you go. Uh, can you describe a tier one law school for us real fast? Give a us a tier one. I think there's 14 of them. I and we're. Yeah, they're the Ivy League equivalent of law schools. I think Michigan is one. People who who are in the industry would know, but there's a there's a, a it's fourteen of them. They're tier one law schools. Then there's a tier two. I think there's a tier three, and then like tier four is your strip mall law okay. school that you mail in. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely, do not do it. The field okay. is flooded with lawyers. Um, and here's okay. more importantly, here's what I know that that's, that's oh yeah, that's good information for the people out there. Here's the other thing. Uh, it's one of the most regretted professions ever like if you really? yeah uh, i think doctors are up there too but but that's all the study you're trading your time do. for money yeah and and the um but lawyers are just they're, they're not wealthy they're not rich uh there's public defendant no, barely makes 100k a year right that. well and if you look at lawyer salaries they're bimodal meaning there's two bell curves mm-hmm. there's the piss poor ones that make 40 grand a year which is what you'd make for 20 dollars an hour mowing yards yep. Like and a then public defender, like right. killing yourself to beat a case that you know you're not going to win. Right. And, and then there's the ones that get hired by your top tier. They call them white shoe law firms. Yep. But you just talk to lawyers. Go look what they do and then say, do I want to do this? Like volunteer, yeah. internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just just don't. I don't know. Do you want to be miserable? Right. Or, or I got an idea. Hmm. How about you not spend the money, just mow yards on beautiful days and shovel. And then in summer, you come down to Miami and relax. Or when do you come down to Miami and relax? I, you don't have to be a massive professional. Yeah. yeah. You could just be frugal. Even trades, like plumbers, Tra- Oh, absolutely. They, they make, make more good than money. engineers come on. Absolutely. For yeah. a fraction so That's good of the to time. know for the people, man. There's some advice for y'all right there. Like, unless you're going to go to a tier one law school, probably not worth worth, worth it. Yeah. The debt that you're going to incur, the job market, finding a good job. Because let's be honest here, a lot of it is nepotism, right? When you like, yes. you know, like the reason why Ivy League schools, I'll give you guys a little bit of game right now. The reason why Ivy League schools are so good isn't necessarily because you're getting a better education, it's because they have networks set up with alumni mm-hmm. and situations where they'll be able to hook you up with a job. The reason why a Harvard degree or a Yale degree is so prestigious isn't necessarily the school in itself. It's the network that it affords you to be able to be a part of. And that is with the power. Well, and here's here's what's funny. <clears throat> a network to what? Get a job. 
Well, yeah, but where? Think think about when you think Ivy League, he worked oh, he went to school in the Ivy League. Where is he or she ending up? And this kind of gets to the lawyer thing. 20, 30 years ago, a lawyer was a prestigious thing. You would go to the Ivy League to work where now? Regular law firm? No, you you go to Ivy League to work Wall Street, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, maybe a law firm, white shoe law firm. Do you guys want to work in San Francisco? <laughs> no. Nope. Do you want to work on Wall Street? Especially nope. especially after what happened with the housing crowd. I'm not talking that they're ethical. They're not. They're scumbags, they're morons, they're idiots. Do you it, there's it's and you you can even see this um in the big four of accounting. These prestigious places of employment that the Ivy League graduates will go to have lost their veneer and their luster. And people are like, why would I go there? Like the whole idea of a of a corner office, that's done. It's over. That's boomer stuff. People are like, no, nah, I want to work on my laptop on a beach in Thailand. That's what you should be aiming for. And so the, I would say the Ivy League is, is unless you want to get in, into the power of politics and work in Washington, D.C., or for some reason you're dumb enough to want to live over in New York City and work in Battery Park and go to Wall Street, <laughs> I, you know, let, that's a sucker's game. Let those people be idiots. Oh, you want to you wanna go where adults crap in the streets? Oh, I can't wait to work in San Francisco <laughs> so you know, or Seattle or wherever the IT. Yeah, people yeah. are trying to get the hell out of California. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, mass migration. Right. So I, I would even say the Ivy League is is kind of moot at this point in time. I'm mm -hmm. worried about the debt part because you could finish school and get your degree. That's great. Mm -hmm. and get connections, but are you going to be able to pay off your debt? Because what, what happens is when you finish school, no, schools ain't cheap. you get your degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a PhD or I have a, a, a bachelor's <laughs> degree. That's cool and all, but guess what? You want to get a house? You want to get property? You want to get investments? Wait a minute. Credit score? Oh, student loan? You didn't pay this off? Older than your iPhone, uh, no loan for you, sir. It's crazy. Yeah. Bro. It's gonna hold you back. Student loans is the one thing you you can't declare bankruptcy on. You can't escape student loans. It's gonna hold you back. That's bro. always gonna come back and hurt you. And and honestly, with the Ivy Leagues, and I know this from you know going to college in Boston, the only Ivy League really that has like effective um, financial aid, unless one of the other schools changed, someone maybe here can uh, correct me. I know Harvard gives you financial aid based on like what your parents make, and they typically most of their students go for little to no cost. But that's because Harvard has a ridiculous endowment, endowment of money yeah. and they can afford to do that. I mean, I'll give you guys an example. I know the Harvard crew team, for example, they have a waiting list of people that want to donate boats. And just so you guys give you guys an idea, the uh, typical empocker or boat for crew is about $50,000. They have a list of people that want to donate those things. So yeah, schools like, Har like Harvard and Yale, they have money to do that for their students. But other places, a lot of times, don't. I mean, if a school has a fucking fencing team, you already know what time it is. <laughs> and, and Division one, by the way. And, like, I have friends, right, that spent like four to six years in school getting a master's degree. Yeah, it's neat based. Sorry, guys. Yep, in the chat. Yep. To end up working at a pet shop. And I'm like, if you spend that time working on yourself, maybe either your side business or working a regular job, you would have saved that money, probably be debt free and have money left over to do what you want to do. My next book is going to be called Mowing Yards. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a bestseller. There you go. Um, All right. OK, so uh, so let's say, OK, so people are living beyond, below their means, right? They're spending less. What should they be focusing on as far as like what should they get into? I know, um, you know, you're pretty diversified. You've had real estate. Mm -hmm. We've talked about precious metals. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the stock market slash, you know, index funds, mutual funds. Can, can we talk about one other very vital, important Please. thing that that traditional financial analysis doesn't cover? All right. We always talked it. about with getting rid of your addiction to spending. We yeah, already talked that's about the that. Real, yep. Very important. Don't even bother. Like either do that or don't even bother showing up. Yep. The next best thing, and I even have a chapter of this in Betcha Pad Economics, but yep. it's very important. Do not fuck up. Mm. If you get married, too bad, man. I'm just <laughs> too bad for you. <laughs> no. I, I can't help you. Um, more, more destructive to personal finances is the number one cause of poverty. What's the number one cause of poverty? I'd say divorce, probably. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, all across the world, even more so than divorce. Um, Related bad, to perhaps divorce. Bad choices. What's the worst choice a man can do? Um, child support, maybe. Ch who said child? Where oh, is that? Mo, Mo? Mo. Shout to Mo on the back. Mo wins. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a kid, you can't afford. Ah. Uh. I. 
guys come up and oh, I'm a dad, I, st- I didn't wrap it up and she about my I'm sorry Stupid. dude you're fucked <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do about it Yo. and he won't tell you this on a consultation that's why I call it yeah. asshole consulting yeah. it's, it's a real business guys it's I called asshole consulting I've had those where they're like they're just completely uh, fucked and I only charge them five bucks because it doesn't require an analysis I'm like you're fucked you get to suffer you get to work another job that's your answer I don't care what Oprah tells you the Democrats say but you're, you're just fucked yeah. so that's that's the other thing is get rid of your um your desire to spend do not fuck up and the major ways you're going to fuck up is majoring in something stupid buying a car you can't afford mm. uh for the man that's why i keep emphasizing that getting a girl pregnant or you getting pregnant <clears throat> having more kids that you could afford and getting married and then divorced <clears throat> or yeah. and then the final one is committing crime so <clears throat> but that those are like the five rules beyond okay don't spend more than you make don't fuck up and then if you're there now we can go on to what should we invest in and it's funny because i've made most of those mistakes thank the lord <laughs> i was able to escape but actually being burnt so thank god yeah yeah, yeah. the big thing is you didn't have the kid Ooh, that's yeah. a big one that I saved mean, you divorce you could kind of a worthless degree just go back to college but you got a kid it's over guys it's fucking over Don't... <laughs> yeah. it, uh, it's the republicans in the senate mm-hmm. they get no no it was your dick that got you in trouble that yeah. was what got you yeah, we're laughing but that's serious yeah, you got to work really hard to to oh, you know overcompensate for they got to earn mm-hmm. a lot more money to get yourself back to that homeostasis where you can now start to be able matter to, how to go to work or do business and deal with a kid at the same time when you're broke yeah Bro. yeah it's yeah, yeah it's just, you're gonna it's just, need some serious help with that you know maybe you know luckily ho- hopefully if you have family that can assist you or something like yeah. that yeah but um all right so now that let's now say we, we get that. all those things out the way <laughs> investing it's, it, that would destroy most people now what do we do all right all depends on your age and who you are where you are the older you get obviously you move to um uh, more sure fixed income type of investments good point all right for most of our audience here uh you're gonna want a wide and diversified investment portfolio yeah. so they always recommend you probably have more equity index funds that are diversified. Uh, the reason Can you give why, an example for some of well, those? Uh, Vanguard uh, S&P 500 index. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nice and, and safe. Yeah, nice to say, well, no, there's always risk in everything. Yeah. But uh, the reason you want to go with a, diver- with a mutual fund is because it's already diversified. You're not investing in one stock. Yep. You're in, in that particular stock, uh, mutual fund we're talking about, there's 500 individual stocks in there. The top 500 in the United top States. Top 500 guys. in the United States. And the reason you want to go with an index fund is because historically that has beat the investment professionals. You never pay anyone to invest for you. Go pick up a freaking book. Go spend, just learn about index investing, why the professionals don't, and there you go. You set up your account at whatever, Vanguard, Fidelity, wherever. They have an index fund. You invest a certain amount in that. Um, it's basically a computer, guys, that goes off of algorithms and, you know, invests it for you based off, you know, numbers and algorithms. And, yo, guys, it beats the professionals almost every single time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, since, what, I think, like, the 1950s or 1880s, something like that. 1880s. The 1880s. 10% return on S&P 500. 12.83%. There you go. Nice. Um, so yeah. you can't really go wrong with the index. It's, you know, there's risk in everything, but that mitigates the risk significantly. Right. So that is only one component of your investment. Um, as you age, you will diversify into other things. But starting out right now, you should have <clears throat> some index funds. Easiest way to get in too. You know, you don't need a credit yep. score for it. Yep. You can just go ahead and just make a brokerage account make and a brokerage start account. investing right away into a, 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 a fund that tracks the S&P 500. Right. So there's that you are going to want to have some exposure to real estate. That doesn't mean you have to own a home, but you can invest in what are called real estate investment trusts. Also through a Vanguard account or a Fidelity account, where you have REITs, real estate investment trusts, because now you have an exposure to real estate, which is another asset class and uh, asset category. You may want that because you can't afford a house now, but if you get some exposure to real estate, that investment goes up, so you're not losing out to housing inflation. So that's another component of your portfolio retirement planning. You should so have two some- different facets. You can get into the REIT side of it, mm-hmm. right? Which is a little bit safer. You don't got to deal with tenants and shit like that. Right. Uh, the returns might not be as high as actually buying a property, mm-hmm. but it's, it's one way to expose yourself. Right. Or there. I mean, if you want, you can buy a lot or, of people. Or buy a house, like, which yeah. we talk about on this podcast. A lot of people say, oh, should I invest in real estate? I'm like, do you own a house? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, you're invested in real estate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you already have a house or a condo, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, another thing I would say is absolutely vital is cryptocurrency. Not a lot, not today, but my general rule of thumb is you should have at least the equivalent of one Bitcoin. Uh, of, and you can di- further diversify into Ethereum, Litecoin, or some of the other ones. Um, 
Please don't invest in the stupid joke ones. Please just, just, just. <laughs> Dogecoin don't and all the other crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah, telling just, me I can't dump all my money into Dogecoin. You, dude. you can do what you want. You could do what you want. But oh, I'm just saying, slowly over time, you should be aiming to, by the time you're 40, have a one full Bitcoin equivalent of cryptocurrency. There you go. 200 ounces of Which silver. Which nowadays is about $20,000. One Bitcoin, I think, right yeah. now is around 20K. Yeah. So, so that, that's good. Uh, it's just a rule of thumb. Uh, you should also have some silver, precious metals. I recommend 200 ounces per person. Uh, more the better. I've also been starting to get into- I invested in that myself. Yep. I, yep. I took your advice. I've spent, it cost me about, so you guys, well, guys are wondering, I bought this- Seven silver. grand or so. Yeah, it was about, yeah, 70, 70, 7,500. 7, I got 200 ounces of silver, got it through coins. Coins, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah you want to physically own it. You don't want to own it on your brokerage account because then you don't own it. It's mm -hmm. just an electronic record. And then also I've been, you know, if you want to, you could do gold. I think that's a little overvalued, but I've even been collecting copper pennies because I like to have some copper, but that's more mm -hmm. of a hobby. But once you got 200 ounces of silver, mm -hmm. I think you're pretty good to go. No pun intended. How much gold should they have if they're going to go? I don't, gold I don't like gold. You don't like it? It's just too damn valuable. Okay. It's not divisible enough. And so okay. I would probably just get more silver is what I do. If, if you want, there's nothing wrong with having a gold coin or two, a couple ounces of gold, but I, you know, geez, I hope you don't have to use it. Yeah. You know, like, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, when we brought uh, Kiyosaki on, he actually said it himself. He said, silver is what you actually use to barter and trade with. Mm -hmm. Gold is what you hold on to. So even he kind of has a similar uh, sense. Yeah, I was going to say gold is what you use to buy the guy's daughter with. Um, that's <laughs> 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 gold so, is what you do to buy a slave so, in post-apocalyptic So if people world. are going to, let's say people are in a privileged position. Like, you know what, you know, I, I want to get into, because there's some guys out there that are like, I want precious metals because the U.S. dollar is no longer backed by right. gold. Ah! Right. right, you know, you get those people out there that, that hate fiat currency. Uh, if they want to buy gold, how much do they have? What, what's your thoughts I, on that? I guess two ounces, three ounces. Two, I never ounces. thought about okay. it because I, I was like, no, I'd, I'd rather have the divisible currency. So but, yeah. 200 ounces of silver, two to three ounces of gold. Two to three ounces of gold. For sure. good enough. But it's also on, like, Oh, what's it called? How, how much is uranium? two or three ounces of gold nowadays? Got me. I don't even look at it. I, I... Mo, can you do a quick little background on that real quick? Two or three ounces of gold, see roughly what it is as of today. George Gammon spoke about coal or uranium. I forgot what, what he said. Oh, commodities. In, in, commodities, in, 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 yeah. 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 And that's another one that you should probably have a little bit of exposure to. A commodities index. Not oil. Not coal. Not natural gas. A diversified commodities index that mm. has lumber, coal, uranium. Be, 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 be. A diversified commodities index, mm. also part of your portfolio. And I think the important thing for you guys, when 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 we're talking about indexes, guys, indexes are, are essentially, like I said before, it's a computer investing on your behalf, and it's a diversified situation where there's a bunch of them all into one package. Think of right. buying, um, right? You got an individual stock, right? That's just that one stock, and then you got a diversified uh stock that has a bunch of other ones it's the equivalent to like let's say you got one thing where it's just oreo cookies versus you go ahead and get the diversified one which is oreo cookies chips ahoy reese's uh reese's etc so you get a little bit of each cookie so if one cookie goes down in value you're able to still you know reap the benefits from the other cookies maintaining and or even going up in value versus if you just all in on oreos and oreos go down well guess what you take that l off oreos that's a, the, what an s p 500 is that's what aaron's talking about when he says a diversified commodities portfolio instead of going all in on uranium why not go all in on <coughs> uranium coal lumber etc so Absolutely. if the market does take at some point you don't feel the effect now the negative side is right you're taking less risk which means less reward that's what however works. it's a safer um, bet in general because now you're using all of the to the totality of the the different resources. Where if they all crash at the same time, well, we got other problems to worry I, about. I think I think <laughs> mo most of your audience is smart enough to understand diversification. I think they know what. A, and if you don't you know what a mutual fund is, well, that, that, okay. But for the young yeah. guys, look up what a mutual fund is yeah. or an index fund, and exactly. it, it'll explain it. So. Uh, there's that. So we did what commodities, real yeah, estate. That's a crude S explanation. Index S and P five hundred. Um, precious metals. Precious metals. Uh, crypto. Yeah. Uh, why do I think we got real estate? Um, what about to... personal development? Oh, uh, that not necessarily related to personal development. Let's talk about uh, the number one way to hedge against inflation: your skills. All right. Uh, your skills are an investment that you need to make. Uh, probably the first and most important investment in mm. because it has an effect on the number one thing that's going to determine 1. the rest. K, of by the way, to, uh, for those ounces of gold. Okay, well, 1, so 5,000 okay. for three ounces, okay. roughly. Okay, right. so the number one thing that you should be investing in, though, is your skills, mm -hmm. because that's going to determine the value of your time, how many dollars you're getting per hour of time, which then goes to invest in buy things like that. So 
okay, I joke about being a, a lawnmower guy, although not that much because it's the same as a barista without the stupid sanctimonious degree that you have. But either way, um, if you can get that up to $100 an hour, now you can work five hours and buy all this stuff. And my goal is to retire as early as possible or be free as early as possible. That's every, yeah. That should be everyone's goal. Right. And so also because you have a, a valuable skill, um, doesn't really matter what happens to inflation. Dentists are going to cover their asses. Mechanics are going to, they're naturally hedged against inflation because people need mechanics. They need dentists. If you have a diversity and inclusion degree or a degree <laughs> in, in anthropology or feminist studies, you're going to be mowing yards or if you're in Venezuela, sucking dick. All right. <laughs> No, you won't be in Venezuela. You'll be in Colombia because no one has money in Venezuela to pay you to suck their dick. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that too realistic? I no, 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 real. I, I, that's that's funny. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's that's the number one thing, that if you can get a skill early on and it's hedgeable, get plumbers, electricians, these guys don't have to worry about inflation. They just raise their prices because they, they can. Because what are you going to do, not have a crapper? Yeah. So um, that would be, that's another thing. But it has to be the right education. Um, I also like real estate for hedging against inflation. Because yeah, if you look, if you, and, and the beauty guys, I broke this out in another episode, so I won't go into crazy detail. But um, investing in real estate is good for inflation because what happens is when you invest in, of course, this is only assuming you do it with leverage, right? You're using the bank's money. You're only putting down a portion. Well, as inflation goes up and the house price goes up, well, you only invested a portion of that house's value into it and your house goes up alongside that money that you invested. So it protects that money that you put in versus it losing value just sitting in a checking account somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think we covered them all. So we have mm -hmm. skills, <clears throat> real estate, commodities, precious metals, crypto. Yes. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So that is the wide and diversified category of assets that you should have. Can you tell people about setting up that 401k? Because you have one that's like ta that helps with taxes, right? Right. Well, they all help with taxes. But let's go first into this thing because it's important is you invest in all these different asset categories. Yeah. But then as you age, different proportions, like you would trade from one and into the other. You uh. move from one into the other. So by the time you're – and also it depends on your life expectancy. Like if your parents live to 100, you're going to stay in equities and, and capital gains, Amy. You're going to – you're not cashing out anytime soon until you're about 80. Yeah. Well, if your old man died of cancer at 60, well, you might want to look more like 50 years old. And <laughs> you can prepare for the worst. Well, yeah, no, it's it's true. Yeah. I got a lot of people yeah. like I'm I'm 65. Like, yeah. I'm like, well, how old is you know? When did your parents die? Oh, they're still alive. I'm like, you're not retiring at 65, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you're. They're still going like you. You get to retire when you're 85 because yeah. your money won't last 40 years. That's true. So the old retirement plan is, uh, you know, I don't think we can benefit from right. that like they did before. You're working at Walmart. So yeah. one thing you can do to simplify this, because if it's simple, it's easy and you'll do it, is companies like Fidelity and Vanguard have these things called freedom date funds or, or time uh, target date mutual funds mm. where they will invest in different index funds, whether that's bond, the S&P 500, different asset categories based on your retirement date. <clears throat> and so you don't have to do reallocation. You don't have to do rebalancing. You give, you say, okay, I am whatever. I'm, I'm 50. Uh, let's do it younger. I'm 25 years old. I plan to retire in, let's say 2065. There is a target date mutual fund. You could probably search right now, target date mutual fund 2065 to go in increments of five. That's the one you invest in. And you throw your money in. They do all the allocation. As you age, they do the rebalancing, and you don't have to worry it's about it. It's a computer it. that does it, right? It's not a, a person? It's a, Well, a person has to program the computer. But, yeah. yes, they, they the index, it's all index investing. Yeah. And then they have an actuary or statistician figure yeah. out, okay, if you're going to retire here, here's your average life expectancy and stuff like that. Yeah. So that, that makes it easier. I think the important thing also for people to understand so that we don't confuse them is that, guys, all index funds <clears throat> are mutual funds, but not all, all mutual funds are index funds. Correct. Okay. That's a very, very big distinction there because – some mutual funds are run by a computer. That's what you want. Then you got some mutual funds that are actually handled by an individual where they take a percentage of your earnings, right. which and is then, what you don't want to do. You don't want that. You don't want a human doing it. You, you Just index investing. That's it. Index yeah. investing. You're only investing, investing in index yeah. funds. Yep. Yeah. Keep because it not, yeah. Yep. All index funds are mutual funds, but not more, all mutual funds are index funds. You mm -hmm. want the computer algorithm to uh, uh, investing for you, not some individual you know, even the, the top guys at the top hedge funds, they lose the index uh, uh, funds, guys. Mm -hmm. And it can't be. Uh, last for thing here. What do you think about the coming decline? What's what's your talk about that? Well, it's it's a, a natural 
this is just the natural flow of all civilizations and empires. You have good day, you have a good golden period. People get weak and soft, and then they don't work, and you got bread in circuses, and and then the the empire collapses. Right. So we're in the the declining uh, state. <clears throat> the good news we have here in the United States is. Um, Everyone is declining faster than us in making even worse decisions. So we're still the best game in town. Um, but in terms of uh, actions that – what that means for you and actions you should take when it comes to investing, it doesn't change anything we've talked about right here. Okay, Don't spend more than you make. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing you can do to hedge against the thing. You want to hedge against the collapse? You want to hedge? Do you want? Do you guys want to hedge? Hey, do yeah. you guys want to hedge against the collapse? Yes. yes. Okay. Let tell me us. tell you. Let me tell you my secret. Okay. Please tell us. Don't have kids you can't afford. Okay. There. There you go. If you're just a single man or single woman, do you know how easy it is to get by? Mm. Like to feed a mouth of one and you're a dude. I mean, it's really easy. Have a good skill set. All mm. right. Um, have a diversified portfolio. Like if you got a house or some land. And you have it paid off, although depending on your interest rate, I wouldn't advise against I, I would advise against paying off your mortgages or your debts right now. But you have a house, you have a uh, an acceptable mortgage, um, you have a little bit of food, you got a good skill, uh, you have some silver and gold and all that, and you don't have mouths to feed. Okay, fine. The electricity goes out a little bit. You're still okay. I got solar panels, so I don't care. <laughs> um, but you know, oh, do you? What about your hobbies? I mean, think about this. Oh, we can't go to the nightclub. It's shut down because there's no electricity, and people are shooting themselves in the street. Oh, okay. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go paddle on my boat out in the ocean, or I'm going to go for a hike. Um, having kind of hobbies and activities that don't require money. Yeah. But it, it's kind of the thing where it's like, oh, I really need your help. I have a ton of mortgage debt and I got fired and laid off and my children are hungry. My wife's about to uh, divorce me. I'm like, you be fucked. <laughs> I, you're going to suffer. And that's the answer. And there's nothing I can do about it, mm. which is why it's important. We reach the younger people. So it's preparation. Uh, skills. Prevention. Prevent. Now yeah. it's a prevention. <clears throat> yeah. No, you nailed it. it yeah. It's exactly like health. Like, oh my God, I've been a pig and a sow. I want to become Lizzo. And now they're going to amputate my foot. What do I do? I guess you're going to hobble. <laughs> you know, um, so don't let it get to that point. Yeah. Um, and so, but I think the the main uh, challenges we're facing in a, in a declining, I wouldn't say a collapsing, but a declining society are more psychological and um, and uh, social. Mm -hmm. You know, have good friends. Mm -hmm. um, be in good health. Uh, have a good activity. Have some fun activities to do. Um, like if the world, let's say the United States were to go to pot and, oh my gosh, we've got rolling brown on top. My life is not going to change because I don't, okay, I'm still going to play poker with the guys. I have electricity. I got some food. I don't have mouths to feed. Um, I'm, I think I'll be okay. It's more like, oh my gosh, you know, they shut down Disney world hmm. or the interstate is in disrepair. Well, okay, but I'll still get by. So I think managing your expectations, not having dreams that rely upon a, upon a first world economy function. I mean, heck right now you can't people, people got their heads up their ass. I'm surprised we're even functioning as it is right now. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's as long as you're like, Oh, I need to live look in at Canada Canada right now. Yeah. I mean, so, well, God damn. we've always had to look at them kind of, <laughs> yeah. what about savings? Like, like emergency so see, funds? Well, yeah, you should do good, good point. You should have an emergency fund and they always say three to six months. But once again, this gets back to the point. If you don't need that much money because you're spending less than you make, your emergency fund could be ten grand and you're good for a year. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's a that's a good thing to have. But then also, I just had this request, like, well, wait, what do we got to worry about inflation eating away at our emergency fund? It's like, okay, well, then you better have bought food. And now we start going into kind of prepping, which I don't really want to get into, but it's something to consider. But you know, I have my electricity and energy needs covered. I have a wood burning stove. Um, I have tools, I have weapons, uh, I got food, I got water, ammo. I got lots and ammo. Yeah. Well, you know how much ammo weighs. You probably yeah, had yeah, to carry yeah, some yeah, in your yeah, day. Yeah. yeah. I it's was very, like moving like, heavy. oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Bullets are heavy guys, but it's good to have, man. You need, you need to have, and if, if there was some kind of chaos that ensued, you need to be able to defend yourself. Right. Apocalypse. Right. And, and mm -hmm. there's obviously way more expertise prepper type of people like that. But if you just don't have that many liabilities and you have your financial act together and you have like a skill that you could barter or trade with, you know, dentists aren't going to go hungry. 
electricians aren't going to go hungry. But, you know, your library science major is either going to be dead or sucking dick. One of the two. <laughs> and she ain't going to like it. So uh, I guess to summarize what you're saying, you're saying, for example, just live below your means. Mm -hmm. Don't spend more than you actually need to spend. Right. But at the same time, have a skill that pays you extremely well. So you can survive in certain uh, environments. It's so boring. I know economics. And diversify your extra money into things. That right, you right. Can, yeah. it, it's economics and finance isn't exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it, yeah. The only time it it's gets, a, if it's exciting, it means it's bad. Like you're in bad, you're looking at bankruptcy and you don't want to. But otherwise, I know, I know they make fun of them, but Ward Cleaver didn't have financial troubles because he was probably spending less than he made. Mm -hmm. It was very frugal. So, but uh, that that's about it. I, I akin it to like, a set of actions and choices and a mindset that says, you know what, if I want financial freedom, how do I get there? And mm -hmm. it starts with, okay, cool. If I want financial freedom, I have to stop doing these habits because they're not giving me what I want mm -hmm. and change it up and make it so that like, okay, cool. Now, instead of going to like, I guess Komodo, I'll go to like, you know, uh, maybe Chipotle. And at that point, it's kind of like, I can say, I'll save money here to put towards my financial future. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And think about all the transactions. I probably did 20 transactions today between, because you guys got gelato and poke bowl here. I like stored up on that because <laughs> they don't have that in South Dakota. Wow. So yeah, no, I went to like five coffee stores. I got cigars? gelato. I, I've had two cigars already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I got a cigar lounge over in South Dakota. Someone in the chat said, this is a real life quagmire. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with that shirt, bro. Yeah. You got the giggity. Got, yeah. The giggity giggity. <laughs> uh, what else do we got here, Mo? Anything else? Some chats here. Uh, okay. Uh, player goes, uh, fellas, please three times have Mark Rudolph on the podcast, an author of the Under Clitoral Hood book, uh, RP anti feminist since 2000s, a legend and branding expert as well. That'll be a few legendary episodes. Promise y'all. Okay. We'll think about it. Um, guys, you got to remember, man, that we're pretty selective on who we bring on the pod nowadays. So we're not just going to bring anybody. You on. are? Why am I here? Wow. Yeah, that's a good wow. question. You, I slipped through the crack. You snuck, you snuck in. Wow. Yeah. All, right. uh -huh. all women are gold diggers. Some are just better at hiding the shovel roll to Masi the goat. Actually, I was the first one that said that. <laughs> but shout out to Roll to Masi. Uh, so my credit score is on its way to becoming 800, 800 by the end of the year. And I thank you for the Money Mondays sh uh, shows I listen to. Keep it up, and you guys deserve that $1 million. And you Thanks, guys got to understand, too, man, here in the sphere, right, on this side of the Internet, we all quote each other, man, so it's all love. Um, Because at the end of the day, it's about getting the message out. Mm. Uh, happy to see Cappy back on the show. Recommend everyone buy Bachelor Pad Economics Book of Numbers and his new book, The Menu, All Great Reads. I will need to buy more silver coins. Okay. Uh, did Kyle, my LPN. That's from Kyle L. Oh, Kyle L. Yeah. And then Uncle Lou goes, uh, did my LPN RN program at a community college, got my bachelor's degree online at Capella University. And I'm currently at Western Governors University, about to finish my master's degree. I'm a travel RN banking in Florida right now. Awesome. Shout out to you, my friend. Right. Um, and then repent and obey Jesus. Hosea 4 6, Hose 4 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, thou that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children okay yeah there's a verse that talks about uh wisdom and proverbs and like if you don't see wisdom you're gonna fail so mm -hmm. if you don't know if you don't see knowledge to like get your life in order with finance you're gonna fail yeah as a muslim i felt like fresh reading that super chat i was, was struggling <laughs> uh let's see here uh uncle luke one more time goes part two of my previous super chat and i have no college loan debt in the process awesome. i did the smart way shout Good out job, to my bro. friend greg p uh, from my personal experience, I would suggest checking out automotive at a community college for a certificate. You may or may not like it, but it would I, I would admit it is a great life skill and doesn't cost much. There you go. Mm. Uh, CC is goaded. I went to uh, one and spent two and a half years to get an AA all for free. Worked on the side, attended a trade school for cheap, making $30 an hour at 21 Ooh. in Cali. Going to get a, B, a BA maybe, but I don't know. Got an AA for Leo. BA worth it? Um, not a Bachelor of Arts, no. Yeah. Get uh, get that worthless book. Don't get a bachelor's of arts. You either you either go STEM or you go home. There you go. Yeah. Um, Aaron is right. Went to a uh, tier two law school, uh, Uni of Houston. Then prestigious law firm started at eighty five k per year. Walked away with sixty k in debt. Took over family uh, SVC <coughs> bus. Um, six years later, net worth fifteen million, near two hundred employees. Don't listen to the matrix, fellas. There you go, there my you friend. Go. And then we got uh. Hats and clogs four three three four goes cappy cappy who hurt you fresh and fit are here for you hello enjoy Miami boy and the last one here Kinetic goes does cappy want to talk about relocating to low taxes 
uh, low low tax states or countries. We could talk about that here in a second. Right. And then going back to the guy that said you, uh, getting a degree for law enforcement. If you're going to get a degree, right? Because some, uh, you know, I know like obviously the FBI, a couple of federal agencies, and even some police departments want you to have college degrees and or credits. Go ahead and get something. Kind of with the like we talked about with being a lawyer. Get a degree that you have a backup job that's in demand, right? Maybe a STEM degree, an accounting degree, whatever. The FBI likes that anyway. That so that if you don't land that law enforcement job because they're extremely competitive, you're able to still get into a career field that's in high demand while you simultaneously apply for these agencies. But make sure you get a degree that's useful in the process because they just want a bachelor's, guys. They don't give a fuck what you major in. Hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on moving to low uh, tax states or maybe countries? Do it. Do you like your money? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to pay for single moms and welfare leeches? Do you do you want to? be no. a slave no i don't um now you may not like south dakota but man florida is a hell of a state yeah i mean if i was young this is where i'd be coming yeah and right. you guys got no Here state income tax yeah texas is another place nevada too. as well ne uh, yeah nevada washington state uh but i don't want to go where a bunch of self-loathing kids <laughs> who still think kirk cocaine is singing uh kirk cocaine <laughs> Kirk cocaine yeah uh, whatever kirk cocaine. I, oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah. I see what i see what you did there uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. So, uh, yeah, if you want to hate yourself, go to Seattle. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, no, there's – there's you know, Tennessee, that's another one a lot yep. of people don't know about. Good but that's real estate a, market there, too. Beautiful Especially state. Memphis, yeah. Yep, beautiful state. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's getting out there. I think people are realizing New York sucks, California sucks, yep. uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, no offense to you, kind of yeah. sucks. Yeah, they do. Um, but, yeah, I think people are starting to wake up to that. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Anything? Uh, that's it for I guess, me. Yeah. Um, so guys, uh, get his books, man. Uh, he is the author of Batchpad Economics, the book of numbers, um, the, you know, uh, Black Man's Guide to Wealth. Yeah, right? Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty, but probably the the number one thing for this <clears throat> that we've had to talk, cause we're talking about the site. We could, we can, you can read Batchpad Economics. It's there. It's action. Getting back to either you quit your spending or don't. Yeah. The main flagship product I got for that is a teachable course called Achieving Minimalism. Bam. Mm. That one, I have, I have two courses on Teachable, all right? The Achieving Minimalism course, Achieving Financial Excellence. If you're addicted to, because there's no reason to do any of this if you're going to keep pissing away more than you spend, uh, than yeah. you make. Yeah. So if you are having trouble spending <clears throat> or you're or whatever, take Achieving Minimalism Theory and Practice. It's on Teachable. That is only open until November 2nd. I was good. I only keep it open at the end of the month, but when I was coming here, I figured some of your audience might want it. So it is open until the end of the second. It is 500 bucks because I'm not fucking around. You guys all piss away your money on a $700 car loan, $300 of credit and all that. So that's available. You just search Teachable and Achieving Minimals and you have that. But otherwise, yeah, the books that would be of, I think, more use, Batch of Pad Economics, like once you get to that point, Mm -hmm. And like, okay, what do I, what are the actions I do now? Absolutely get that book. And that'll tell you 401ks, IRAs, um, budgeting and all that, setting up a company, everything, entrepreneurship and all that. But what, it, just as much as men are addicted to spending and glamour and all that, uh, what else are they addicted to? Girls. Girls. Women. Please go get the book of numbers so you see what your actual chances are so that you, I don't want to destroy your hope. But you're you're going to spend more than five hundred bucks chasing girls. Guarantee you that. Yeah, you're going yeah. to spend more than that. Um, so please understand what your chances are. Like, because when you go and play roulette, what are your chances of winning if you just do black and uh, red, or no, black and no, oh. yeah, black and red. 50 -50? 48, 48, but roughly fifty oh. fifty. Do you know what your chances are going with women? <laughs> yeah. No, you don't know the statistics. So I'd yeah. recommend getting that one. Uh, as well and that's yeah. probably the most important gamble of your life so you right. have to know that one it mathematically is especially yeah. well said um yeah all right guys so uh we'll be back here probably in about an hour or so man uh he's aaron clary go check him out guys all links will be below love it i hope you guys enjoyed this money monday we'll catch you guys peace peace